and rum and no pork at NXT. Get your pork at NXT. The universe shall be the same. You want to join in? Ew, I'm busy. It's Blitzmas season. Joy to the world of the champions here. Which melody he brings? I know, right? Ha! First show. Ha ha. First show. It wasn't me this time. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show, Marsh. It's Who's Hefty. So glad for you to join us. Are we not going to talk over this? We're just going to let it. Are we? Oh shit. New Day won't stop twerking. I <laughs> remember. That's some bass, man. That scares me. That's pretty good. Yeah. It's pretty good. How you doing? How you doing? How you doing? Wow. This is really good. <laughs> A little Paul Heyman behind him. Yeah. Look like at Sammy. Get some ice. Get some ice for the show. Get this show a going. Yeah. Well, a yep. happy yeah, wrestling on the rocks me. day. Happy <laughs> holiday. Happy Rusev day. I will never say happy long day. Fuck that day. That day can go straight to hell. I feel like that should be. They should do it and have that be on like national yeah, STD testing. What, what do you mean right. by do it? I, I like Lana and Bobby. Okay. Ugh. Yeah. Oh shit. Oh my god. Oh god damn it. <laughs> oh, I didn't to, disconnect. Welcome to our first show. I think I'm ready to get started. You yeah. want to go live? We can go live now. <laughs> we are live. She says that all the time, and I just don't get it. Oh, huh, we're live, buddy. I mean, because that's all going to be cut out post-production. Anyway. Yeah, we'll fix it in post. There's we'll no fix it in post. post. There's no pre... <laughs> just, just now. We're live. Just now? Yes. Is it the now, now? You edited out all the farts and times of spilled stuff, though, right? Well... Producer? <laughs> well, welcome. Son of a bitch. Welcome to Wrestling on the Rocks. Where every show is our first show, and every day is a goddamn holiday. That's right. So we are celebrating a little early this year because there will not be an episode next week. We're not going to be able to go live next week because these idiots have like families they care about. Dummies. Yeah, I know. Families. Loved ones. <laughs> Stupid. It's overrated. <sighs> but at oh. least, you know, we're going to be able to cover the pay-per-view. Two pay-per-views, in fact. There was two pay-per-views that we watched. There was actually like two others as well. Ring of Honor and CZW, both the pay-per-views this weekend yeah. as well. Some news there was a lot of that. shit too, yeah. yeah. Um, but I didn't watch any of those. I didn't watch them, no. But there was people clamoring about those a little bit. And I'm yeah. just saying there was a lot of stuff watching this weekend. Uh, and then this idiot wanted to go have a wedding too. Val Renewal. Kind of like... What's the difference, man? She said yes. Yeah, I know. You guys ate cake. You had cake. I ate so much fucking cake. This dude found out. Do you know what Suspitos is? Shit, you're Suspitos. a terrible Latino person. Suspitos. It's like a Mexican cake company that they make the best tres leches cake ever. Mm. Yes. I'm also gonna bring for our next show. They do like tres leches donuts. Yeah, it's so good. Yeah. It's such a good tres leches cake that if you look on their Yelp, there's a bad review and they call it a four leches cake. That's how good it is. They know there's that much leche in it. Also, it is the funniest thing to look for their website because they're based out of Mexico. They have no English website. Nice. And you're just like, <laughs> where for? Okay, how for order? And well, you call and it goes to like a store like uh, Gananea. That's how you know it's legit, yeah. man. That's well, how you know it's legit. How dare you call into question my Hispanic heritage, though? Yeah, you that's do, cool, dude. That's racist. I'm, I'm I do not know about Suspiros. Well, I'm sorry. Yeah. It's a I company? It's a company? It doesn't See? make him less of a yeah, I don't know of a company, no. I know Tres Leches Cake, but... They've been, they've been in like Sonora for like 100 years. Dude, I've, been... I've only been to Rocky Point once in my life. You... What? Okay. You... Wow. I like how we're both... Like all three of us, wow. because I, are like... Together we make one 
Hispanic <laughs> one version of my in-laws <laughs> combined. That's a good point. That's a good point. A lot going on this week. A lot going on next week. Um, oh, if you uh, followed our Twitter, you saw that even though there was a wedding ceremony, we were not invested really in it. I was watching TLC at his wedding. So I was wasn't I. going not, to, not yeah. to watch it, so we were watching it on the phone. Yeah. I got a little bit excited in the photo booth. You can't double book. You think you're going to counter program the WWE with your dumbass wedding? I you got, think like, you're going you know, to draw more than WWE? Did you I, think you were going to draw more than them, dude? My wife hid her hid my phone so I could not watch during the like hand. I would have had a phone tied in my hand for the high hand, hand tying ceremony. They had bondage in the middle of their thing. They used one of those Japanese ropes that are just like a big loop. Oh, oh. they definitely did. Cool. Yeah, yeah. it's pretty good. Nice. Um, Marsh got called uh, dashing. Yeah. Was that your mom? No, that's my aunt. Your aunt? Yeah. She wanted to fuck. <laughs> God damn it. Um, no. <laughs> no, she did not. I misread. I misread. I'm not. Sure. He misread the situation. Misread the situation for sure. The chemo um, was affecting her. And then I was uh, recognized oh, by Yeah, somebody. no, I'm not kidding. <laughs> Oh my god, this is uh, getting so much worse. Well, you got, gotta get away. It's got really I was dark, about to man. Tweet we're live, and yeah. I really don't want. Don't to. worry about it. Yeah, yeah. Get away. No, people wait a few minutes before the you let that one out. The people see the raw footage yeah. that is our show. Plus, you gotta live your life, man. You gotta live your life. Get it while you can. You know what I mean? Get it. Yeah. Get it. Getting, um, getting good. I got recognized for being on the show by some people at Clump's wedding. That was pretty good. Oh, because they watch it for Clump. I think they watch it for Clump. Yeah. But they stay for the farts. But they, <laughs> but they stay for the march. Who we'll recognize you? Um, oh, Chelsea? Yeah, and, she's, and, been, she's been in her chat a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and her dude recognized me. Oh, too. yeah, Matt, yeah. Cool. Um, Kill the ants. I don't know about anybody else. They didn't really say anything. The like wedding planner was asking like why I had no sleeves, and I told her, and she's like, oh, that's really cool. And she like insisted I like, give her, I was like, yeah, it's this. And she then like went to like every person, like the dude, DJ dude, all the clean people, you need to watch this. I was like, this is patronizing, but okay. Uh, uh, <laughs> I told you, man, I should have set up a shirt shop. Yeah. A lot of asses. Yeah. Uh, but I thought about like pulling up my truck because I got the cars in the back, or all the shirts in the back of the car. I was just like, I just pop up the back and then hang them all up and be like, hey, you want clump on a shirt? You want clump on a shirt? That's my slogan. You want clump on a shirt? Um, yeah, that's what's going on. Who wants a clump on a shirt? My parents did, but now I don't want to buy them one. Why? Why? No, it looks mom. just like you, dude. I know my dad even thinks so. It's clump on your a shirt. Your dad thought it looked just like you? Yeah, That's motherfucker. so funny. <laughs> Hashtag clump on a shirt. Did your dad shirt. go, hey, little feet? Yeah, uh, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> little feet, little ears, just like yeah. you. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, damn it! Um, I'll throw this out there for you guys. There are presents, and it's up to you if you want to start the show with them or end the show with them. End the show with them because that's the best way to end a show with presents. All right, we can end the show with presents. Yeah, I don't. I didn't do well crying in the beginning of the show. That's yeah. A good point. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah. Cry, cry baby clump. Yeah, he didn't get the name Cry Baby for no reason at all. What's oh. your uh, what's your stocking there? Oh, had a. What's that? My uh, stocking. That's the. That's my Bailey hugging Bailey. Oh, hugging. Bailey's got a hug. She's, Hugger's gonna hug. Gabe, uh, hand me that. <laughs> Little Bailey hugger. Oh man. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> you gonna continuity? God damn it! I'm trying to do this not terribly. Okay. Uh, or execute well. Execute well. Bam. There you go. Hold it up for the camera. Well, it's been a camera shot. And try. Screw you, bitches. Screw you. Hey, bitches. You sheep. Happy holiday. Hope you sheep yourself. <laughs> Hope you sheep yourself. <laughs> yeah. Go sheep yourselves. Um, Filthy animals. Well, then we'll get into some of the shows. We'll get into some of the shows. Anybody Might as watch well. anything? I guess we should. Yeah. Let's see. There was AEW. There was NXT. What would you guys watch? I watched all WWE. This week, and I watched I watched uh, Dynamite like recap stuff. You watched some recap stuff. I watched Dynamite, and honestly, the recaps were. I mean, there was some cool stuff, but it was it was not. I think I saw all I needed to see. Fair amount. Yeah, I didn't see anything that made me go. I gotta definitely check this out. 
Um, they explain the butcher bit. and the blade not on the show. But on Being the Elite, I read, right? Yep. They, yeah. Which, they're, they're trying I, to make for the first elite, time, right. I was kind of like, you know what? Maybe you should have put that on your fucking network show. Yeah. yeah. I'm not going to fucking watch your YouTube so your network show makes sense. Yeah. It's the other way around, idiots. Yeah. yeah. You make your YouTube show make sense because of what's on the network. Yeah, young bucks, okay? Young bucks. You start, stop Stupid. that shit. Piece of shit. I do... <laughs> <laughs> you got famous. You don't have to do this bullshit anymore. Yeah, you don't yeah, need you, a YouTube you, channel. Lord, yeah. you're on Super YouTube now. Mm. You're on Tube. Yeah, just get regular to, Tube. Yeah. You're yeah. just on Tube. You're on the shit. People that don't know what YouTube's on know know what know about. You're yeah. on TNT. It's the opposite of YouTube. You've covered yeah. both ends of the spectrum. Yeah. <sighs> but yeah, in terms of dynamite, um, they. So I saw they're trying to bring Moxley into the, in in their circle. Uh, if this turns into a feud, I'm actually kind of excited for this. Because I like the way that Jericho came out and said, you've come to me for advice. This is a version of Jericho's character I'd be okay with. Where it's not rehashing things, it's just saying, hey, I've been doing this for a while. I am no, I am knowledgeable. And going into that, because that makes sense. Then you can kind of tongue, you can talk about your storied past, but not... But that's actually also the exact storyline he had leading into his friendship with KO. So it is another rehashing of his exact thing that got him over right before he left. I'm gonna put this in my mouth right now. So I'm gonna just done right now. It's but at least it might be interesting. If what do you think if he joins? How do you feel if he if he joins? I don't know. I don't think he's gonna join. If he joined, I, the only thing I could see that'd be cool is if he joined and he took Jericho out of it. Ooh, like if it were like a, like a Suzuki Goon thing. Wow. That'd be that'd be that's a yeah yeah no bad idea. He goes in. Takes I, don't, I don't want him to be associated with those guys, though. I'd rather he 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 doesn't associate with them. You want him to be like the lone wolf? I'd rather no. I don't want him to be like Baron Corbin, but I do want him to maintain his persona. No, I want him to be good and be the enigma. Baron Corbin's good. Baron Corbin's really good. Um, so I would be disappointed if the big payoff was for him to actually join in a circle, regardless. I don't think I would like him in the inner circle. Hmm. I want to see a match. I'd rather see the match. I'd rather see them go. We already have useless people in the inner circle. Why are we going to add him? Yeah. Like, I mean, Hager hasn't done a goddamn anything. When he the... brought out the goat. Yeah, but oh when God. he milked a goat, dude. It was a male goat too. Was... He came out there with milk on his mustache. <laughs> That's a boy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm goon one. Um. Um. I did. I, I don't know. I did and I didn't like uh, what they did with uh, Jungle Boy getting like the fake pin on Jericho at the end. Oh, a stunt? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of cool. The crowd was into it. They liked it. So you whenever know, the crowd is into it, it kind of makes something a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's well received. Do you know who um, said that on their podcast a week prior to this? Saying, leading into that match, saying this would make sense to get... Jungle Boy over and have a longer storyline down the line. Taz? Taz? No. Cornette? Yes. Oh. Cornette's exact idea came to fruition on AEW, and the people fucking loved it. Eat chicken, dicks. I... Jeez. That was lit. I thought... No, what, man? I didn't mean like that. <laughs> I thought Corbin hated this with such a passion. I, I imagine him covering AEW would just be him swearing. It's not. He likes a lot of the guys. He loves Hangman Page. He loves M MJF. Uh, matter of fact, his co-host doesn't like Hangman Page, and he's constantly defending him. Um, he loves fucking everything Cody and Jericho. Loves Moxley. He likes a lot of the guys on there. He really does. Just does um, not like the Young Bucks. He really doesn't like Young Bucks or Omega. Um, he doesn't like the way they utilize some of the guys like Stunt. Not that they don't have a place anywhere, but the way they're being utilized, he, he is arguments against but it's funny because most people say and they think like oh he just probably shits on them the whole time when he's heavy handed he's heavy fucking handed for sure but he definitely says like here's the really good things I really liked as well yeah um but yeah I thought it was funny they, literally a thing he said do this do this do this Mark was starting to do a pin and you know do a thing it went well and then it went and it went over and I was like heh suckers Luchasaurus is also someone that he's a fucking beast should be doing more shit he needs to do more yeah um, also, I, a, a plus for sorry for eight AEW as uh, signing Big Swole and having her on there because she's pretty good. She's bitching, right? Yeah, she's pretty good. Um, what do you think about her having a match with Emmy Su Sukura? Um, I kind of liked 
her taking the, the mic away and doing the little James Brown dance. I thought that was kind of cool. Did she? Yeah. Hmm. She's a good worker. I like it. Yeah. I'm tired of her when you have so much other talent there that I'd like to see, but... Who, Emmy Sakura? Or Big I'm Swole? tired of Sakura. Oh, well, yeah. I, I, I would have rather seen her paired up with a different person, but mm-hmm. Sakura is their vet right now. What happened mm-hmm. to Aisha Kong? She is... I don't, I don't know, know if she actually signed with them. I don't know if she's actually signed to do wrestling yet. I think she just did a thing with them once. I don't think she signed to them. Fuck. I well, think she she's, just she's still appearing. Is she? Yeah, she's on yeah, their roster. She was there like two weeks ago. She's on their roster. No, no, no. Not like last no, week. Not no. Awesome Kong. Aja Kong. Oh, Aja Kong. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, good yeah, point. Yeah. I haven't seen her. She's um, listed on their roster. No, I, I mean, she, well, yeah. could be a maybe she's got something going on. Yeah, or it could be a Japan thing. Maybe she got a bunch going on out there. I don't know. Fair. I so overall for the show, like, there's things I liked. I liked uh, the Darby Allen Cody kind of thing. I liked MGF talking because I thought it was cool. He came out. He looked. I think he's really putting in the effort to be a heel, and he's doing great. I like yeah. it. Um, I liked the idea of a feud between Moxley and Jericho down the road. Though now you, that thing you said about KO and Jericho makes me. We're having a fun time. Good job. Um, oh man, I didn't. I liked the introduction of the butcher and the blade. I didn't give a shit. Of, I didn't care about the bunny and kicking in all the time because mm-hmm. it kind of made them look weak. And I think they need to look like badasses. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure. Um, I think QT Marshall did a good job of uh, being there and getting the crowd pumped for a hot tag. That was like your job is to be here. And then hot tag, and it's gonna blow the roof off. And he did a good job at that. He built it, everything up. He lasted well, and I thought that was fine. So, yeah, it's kind of a bummer. Hey, I mean, because that's how they presented him even the whole time. You know, I was really hoping for something to go over, like maybe he goes over on um, one of the guys or something. Because I was really hoping that when you book a guy saying like, "Oh, I'm gonna make this your partner because he fucking sucks and we can kick his ass," then he comes out the next week and gets his ass kicked the whole time. You're like. <laughs> It's a bummer. Well, it's in a sense, yeah, because he's also a bigger. He's not a like if you did if you booked like Cheeseburger with him or Marco Stunt, that would make more sense. Like somebody who's frail and tiny, Zach Gowan. You know what I mean? Like, okay, this is gonna be funny, Legolas dude, and then that's their goal. Then that makes more sense. This dude's only had a fairly decent career in the Indies. He's a trainer. He knows his way around, and he did that well, but. I do agree that maybe him showcasing more would have been cooler, though. I think just the hoping. other re- just because he he played the role he was he was positioned to play, and that's fine. Probably a great job at that. I was just bummed that his introduction was we're going to kick the shit out of him, and then they did. And I was like, well, it's just kind of a bummer for him because that really puts him really. It's going to be a fucking hard battle if he were to actually become full time on there and have to come up on the other side. And maybe that's just not the goal. Maybe that's not the plan. Um, I think part of it is that the the they de- they spent time diminishing certain talents like the like they've given a good loss record to the elite and yeah. all its members. So what they're doing now is there. yeah, what they're doing is they're they got to build up people. Though yes, they really need to build up people. Yeah. Um, let's see. Was this tag any good? Page Omega and Spears and Saban. Um, no, it was all right. Um, Penelope hear. Ford, is that her name? Penelope Ford? That's, yeah, Kip Sabian and yeah. Joey Janelle's old. She, um, she's pretty good. Oh, she came out? Yeah, she That's did cool. She did some stuff uh, on behalf of Kip Sabian. Um, she has a pretty good Hurricanrana. Yeah. She also has a really good spot where she does a cartwheel back handspring into the, you know, the, the yeah. old China. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it looked good. Yeah. I've seen her have a couple matches here and there. I always thought she was all right. Yeah. yeah. Um, I thought she was pretty decent. You scrolled to this thing that shows Luchasaurus and uh, Sammy Guevara. I do have a th- thought on Luchasaurus, and he's amazing, but I wonder this. Is it him, or is it the people around him in the ring? Because he is big, he's good on the mic, he looks scary as hell, and he can kind of move. The thing I always notice, though, is when he does, maybe it's his moves that these big sweeping kicks, they don't look good at all. They look like when he does, uh, when he does the sweeping kick across three people, it looks stupid as hell. When he does a lot of his kicks, you see people have to pause to take him. And I thought it was just when he came out to interfere with the Dark Order. Like that big pop when he came back. But I've noticed it in other spots too. I'm like, this doesn't look great. It looks like either they're not aware with him and maybe they need to rehearse. Or my question is, is it him and that people are doing stuff to brace and protect him and make him look good? 
It could be that. It could also be that um, I feel like a lot of people in this organization really pull back. They really slow down at just the right moment to be obvious, not just the right moment to not actually hurt. Um, it could just be him trying to be overly protective of the smaller guys because he's constantly there with smaller guys. I think, yeah, yeah I agree. I think because uh, I'm pretty sure that dude like legit is like a black belt or some shit. Y- yeah, no, he's a he legit has a master's degree. Yeah, nice. No, but he's a. Uh, I don't know. I, I wish he had kicks like uh, Alistair Black. Right. Yes. I wish he was able to kick like him. If he was able to throw and execute a kick like Alistair Black. Oh yeah, that'd be fun. On a regular killer. basis. Well, the thing is, that was the, I, I used Alistair Black as the person I thought of. Is that. I was like, well, Aleister Black kicks like a motherfucker. Shinsuke Nakamura, the kick, that's yeah. striking is your thing. But you watch them versus a variety of people. Aleister Black with Cassie Zona, Aleister Black with pretty much anyone, or Shinsuke with anyone. The kicks look good. Yeah. And that's what I think he needs. I think a, a, quite a few people in the roster need to work on their snugness. Yeah, we don't need to go to the point of making full contact, but... It's not It's not even the other side where I remember, like, I always think of the opposite where it was, like, Undertaker when I was a kid in a Hell in a Cell match and his punches are stopping here and you're like, I can way see that. Mm-hmm. It's the slowness of it. They're getting yeah. close, but it's like when I go like this and then stop here, that doesn't look good and I can see that difference. And if I'm noticing it on my TV that cannot play your bullshit, it's, yeah. um, I have a problem with it. Um, <sighs> yeah. Yeah, I think they all pull their punches way too much over there. I like to be a little more snug. I didn't even watch the the tag match. Honestly, I just I have no I have no interest. Well, no I can't imagine I can't imagine Young Bucks or Proud and Powerful putting on a match that makes me interested at this point. I think the, I think them in that trios match was great. I thought that looked good. I think them when they said oh, we're going to do this again, I'm like, why? That made no. That made no <laughs> I think you again. could do a weird mix up. It's like okay, we're going to have Santana versus this person and. Ortiz versus, you know what I mean? Like, have it split up, do some differentiation there. Everyone does that, but it felt very... If the Young Bucks and uh, Proud and Powerful are going to be your big tag teams that you're building up right now for this feud, one, don't give away on free TV. The trios match protects that, and it lets you showcase other people or make it worth something. It did feel like, one, we're just going to do this again. Why? Why are we doing this again? They've been doing shit in some way or another for a long time, and having it just go from, like, it's going to be two, and I swear to God, next week it's going to be three on three again, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, he also came out wearing a Dallas Cowboys helmet, which was stupid. Yeah. Um, I saw that. See, he posted my shared MG Bucks. Oh, did SCU come out? Am I reading that? SCU came out? What? SCU came out and... SCU? Uh, yeah. Oh. I didn't see that part. SCU. I did see though that they they have a uh, WWE has a uh, Stone Cold Steve Austin shirt, Stone Cold University. SCU. Yeah, but that's been out since like '98. I know, but I'm just saying. <laughs> I used to have one as a kid. In the back said like School of Hard Knocks. Nice. Yeah. I just saw it like the other day. So. Really? Is that, is that the first time you've seen it though? I think so, that I can remember. It is a callback to his old stuff. Yeah. It is. And it, it could be that they're all like, we already had an SCU. Yeah, we did SCU um, before. Yeah. Which would be funny. So let's move on to NXT. So we can um, yeah, unless there's anything else that you thought um, and especially no. stood out. No, Not really. That no. was the thing. Is did you see Aubrey Edwards and uh, Jungle Boy sort of flirting on uh, Twitter? What? It was upsetting to me. It was upsetting. Uh, playing favorites now, huh? Yeah. Um, Aubrey playing favorites now over your over dramatic <laughs> ref play. That's funny. You should marry. I mean. Oh, that's a sketch. Well, I mean, it wasn't like Dana Brooke level. Oh, okay. We live in modern times. It's a good point. Yeah. Good point, Clump. Yeah, it's a good, yeah, good point. point. <laughs> yeah. It's 2019. Wake the fuck up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Modern times. How did this? Oh, shit, man. That triple threat at the end. Okay, but it opened up with Garza and Leo Rush, Yeah, that's guys. not how it started, man. Jesus Christ. Let's go from the get-go. Start off with the Cruiserweight title match between Angel Garza and the champion Leo Rush. What do you guys think of the match overall? A lot of good spots. Um, seemed pretty clean to me. I was a little distracted though during the match, so I was. I didn't give it my full attention. How many times have we seen this match? It's like like that too. Yeah, but that's the yeah, problem. Yeah, I was kind of over it, but I mean, it wasn't bad. Um, Garza got the win, got the title, and proposed to his girlfriend. And that was, I, and I guess that's what they're building up to by having this series between the two of them. Is this gonna be families? 
No, just like put the pet, put the title on Garza. Okay. I, I think they got the the idea to, to push him a while back, and this was the this just is the way to do it. The way to do it. Yeah, yeah. makes sense. Makes sense. Let's see. I'm looking to see if there's any other like major highlights coming on the way. Raul versus Cameron Grimes. A um, couple of promos with Baszler and Rhea Ripley. Uh, always good production. Dakota Kai beat me a yim. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cool. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. 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 Um, I, mean, I actually fast-forwarded through Brizango and Singh Brothers. I will say that that's worth talking about as a bottom five. Brizango is absolutely like unbearable. Like it is not watchable. I couldn't get through the entrance for one. It was really long. Doctors. It was really long. Ooh. Is is that why you had those? I have three pairs on. You have three pairs. It's gotta stay warm. I thought you guys noticed that I took when you were like, oh it's gonna get greasy, I took a pair off. Took a pair off. Yeah. I just I just don't know what to think anymore. What do you mean? Oh dude, that's like Emma. <laughs> oh yeah, it was left. the way it was. Cool. Um, the beginning with the stupid noise, the heartbeat sound that was just so fucking horrible and screeching. I ended up just stopping, fast forwarding, seeing it was Brazango, seeing it was Sing Brothers, and said, skip, 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 skip. <laughs> Absolutely no point to watch any of them do anything ever in the ring. One of those, I believe one of those nurses is uh, one of their new signees. Uh, I think her name's Indy Hartwell. That sucks. That sucks if that's how you got on TV the first time. Well, they use their newbies yeah. like that all the time. Yeah. Mm, but for Brizango, that sucks. Oh, my God. If it Braun was for... Strowman. It was a rose petal. Yeah. So was, so was Paige. So was Sasha. Yeah, They're... on the main <laughs> show. There were rose petals. Lita was a hoe the first time she came out. Yeah. She was Godfather. One of she Godfather's was a hoe in ECW, too. Yeah. How many women... Female writers, do they actually have? Do we even know? Maybe a half. What? What? Half a. <laughs> <laughs> got a pair of legs. That's, that's what we got right here. I wonder if, if Dana Warrior is the only one they got, supposedly. That scares me. I think that's just uh, the name that that's they throw not out a, there, but it's not really. She's I'm not good. really in the writing. I feel like readings. so too. Well, um, and when she does her long ass Hall of Fame speech that she does every year, I, I'm not saying this. God, I know we got a shout out. I, I don't think. I don't think she's the strongest writer if they, if they have her. Probably not. Uh, well, Bel Air and Caden Carter was pretty cool. That was pretty cool, yeah. actually. Um, but if I were to talk about a top of the of the week, that triple, triple threat, threat. Yeah. Mm. with Keith Lee, Tommaso Champion, and Finn Balor. Pretty fucking cool. Pretty freaking oh, yeah. sweet, man. Uh, what do you think about Finn Balor going over and not Keith Lee, as many people thought would happen? I, I thought it was done perfectly. Yeah, I think, I think maybe this is a test for Keith Lee. Like, can we keep the heat on him with this loss? And I think you can. I think he can take it. Keith Lee, it's just starting, and it's gonna keep going. I think with Finn Balor, they're trying to build this commodity up rapidly for a big feud for Royal Rumble or for WrestleMania. I, I honestly think what might happen is my prediction: somebody. Finn Balor wins the wins the NXT title at Royal Rumble, or at the Takeover before Royal Rumble. Um, that would be good eyes too. If people from Rumble saw an NXT title on Finn Balor. Well, I think that's like, I think that's the plan is moving the belt to Finn. And then Ciampa wins the Rumble. I Ciampa also I also think someone from NXT will win the Rumble as well. I think I think it's fine. I think it's I think it's good. I don't I I know there's always a thought of like well. You putting that much eyes on the small brand. This small brand needs it, and oh, yeah. their work's amazing. It would showcase to people who are like, oh, like the casual fan who hasn't seen you, like, oh shit, that's good. Oh, this is fantastic. But so, are you saying so for this year, the Rumble winner can choose between any of the brand titles? I would imagine. Would, I would hope so. Yeah. I don't know. For me, it, it would be kind of a waste of the spot I to have Champa win. Because he doesn't want to do main roster stuff anyway. He just wants to have the NXT title. That's and, why, though. And they're, So you're saying they're going to put the NXT title as the main event for WrestleMania? I would be cool with it. Because I could see you building Ciampa wants that title. 
Champa wants. Did you register that? Yeah, that was disgusting. Yeah. You think they're gonna put the NXT title as the main event of Wrestle Fucking Mania? I will put. I will put my money on that. Oh fuck! Let's get some money, <laughs> let's dude. Make, let's make this money. Let's make make some money. bucks, man. Make I would. I would money. put that. That's my call. <laughs> I think this year the main event of WrestleMania will be an NXT title match. And it will be the third match on the fucking card. We're going to begin our first main event of the evening. I don't care. Opening if they, the show if they on say a quadruple that, yeah. main event main WrestleMania. That's the only way that shit's happening. I'll eat my damn hat. Yeah, no well, one, you're, you're no probably going to eat it regardless. No gonna stop. You're going to eat it. You're just going to eat it. Yeah, you're going to eat it anyway. Um, Win, lose, or draw, man. you're eating something. <laughs> More like I said, problems. I could see somebody from, I could see somebody from NXT winning, but that's going to be their call up. They're going to go straight for a title. So you think it's going to be Cole probably? Fuck Adam Cole. Man, fuck that. Uh, Cole yeah, I mean. Yeah, I want him to go up against uh, actually Bray Wyatt for it. Let that be the main event. Well, the other dream would be it'd be awesome if it was Keith Lee who won it, but if he's, cool. it's too rapid. You can't have Keith. You can't have Keith Lee against Lesnar or Keith Lee against. Fiend right now. Gargano. Yeah, I can see Gargano. Yeah, I could see that. Because against, they kind of need the baby face. Against two. Well, it doesn't matter against two. He's going to lose. But you could still have him debut and have a kick-ass match. And people are still going to be yeah. behind him because he's Gargano. That's yeah. true. I That's am. cool. Um, I do think, though, that this match was uh, uh, paced out perfectly. The timing on these three guys is ridiculous. Sick vets, bro. Dude, that whole, like, the last, like, five seconds there, mm -hmm. there was, like, the finishing combo of stuff, people were, like, flying just past each other and shit to make that happen, mm -hmm. and it all landed so fucking perfectly, it looked so crisp, it was insane. Yep. Uh, we watched the end of that probably nine times, so I was just, are you shitting me? Just screaming. <laughs> um, I loved uh, the callback to last week, Keith Lee coming up on Finn Balor and Phil Balor, like, being aware, like, he's behind me. <laughs> like, I thought that was so great. Like, just awesome. Keith, I mean, Keith Lee is just, and I mean, for the NXT roster, which is a little bit of a smaller roster, mm -hmm. he's so perfect because he is just so fucking scary to come up over. Like, like, just him up here and like, oh, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I thought that match was just fucking spectacular. I mean, I he's know. not, there's some big ass cats that they have in the NXT roster that didn't even use, like Baba Toonday, whatever his name is. Oh, yeah. And then they have another guy that's like even taller, it's like 7'3". Yeah, they have a guy that's like 7, some crazy yeah. thing. Oh, yeah, that dude. Yeah. Yeah, that huge guy. They made him an elf for their uh, holiday. Clever. Like, that's yeah. pretty good. Clever. Yeah, that's funny. Clever animals. It's a good joke. All right, well done. so well that done. wraps up for NXT. Um, now we move on to Friday. Yeah. And I would say that was definitely top five. Um, yeah. In regards to NXT, this coming up tomorrow, uh, you're going to have an opening match be uh, Adam Cole versus Finn Balor uh, for the title Baylor. to open the show. No commercials, commercial free NXT. What up? Just the opening match. Throw us on. So that, I don't know, it's interesting. I, I could see. I, I don't know, man. I don't think they're gonna. Do I don't think that. they'd pull the trigger, but that'd be amazing if they did. That'd be so good if they did. No, well, but they're like giving it to you on television instead of making you yeah. get that you, takeover event. You have to do that occasionally, though. I think they we've lost that. Is you have to have big titles occasionally change hands on TV because then you get to this point. It's like we all know it, or we all think like, why would I watch this? It's going to happen on the pay per view. Yeah. You have to change titles occasionally, because yeah. then it makes you want to watch. Like, you know, yeah, 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 yeah.
time. Yeah, we've been having audio. Oh, 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 oh. Nope, we have audio. Nope. Oh, oh. Oh, 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 oh. Um, Sorry about that. Man, I hope we weren't just like talking for half hour without any. We're so what did you think out. of Raw? We are going to find <laughs> out. <laughs> so, so that about wraps up our show. Nah, just kidding, guys. We're at SmackDown now. Yeah, well, wait, wait, yeah. Hmm. that's interesting. Um, I was gonna sneeze like right into the mic. Oh my god, dude! But you can't sneeze into my mouth either. Dude, I just did the vampire sneeze. It's in my shoulder. Just a, a vampire. Called the vampire sneeze. It's called the vampire. Because you oh, like your. It. That's that's clever. It's brilliant. Oh. Thank you. Okay. Did you come up with that one? No, was like, young, young television. Like, should television. Said, yeah, what did you get? <laughs> If you're just yeah. joining us, welcome. Tell if you're us. just joining us, we've got audio now. Yeah, and Gabe just invented the vampire sneeze. <laughs> he invented the vampire sneeze. You missed me wearing gloves. Three pairs of gloves. Fuck. Three layers yeah, of latex have, gloves. Now you just have balls in your head. And small, smooth hands. They are smooth. Yeah. They are small. Um. <laughs> Every time you adjust, I get nervous. <laughs> Yeah, no, this is going good. Let's, Let's head up can... SmackDown. Any highlights from there that really ring a bell? Um, <laughs> Not really, but um, let me see. Let me check my notes. I will say uh, a couple of low lights on there. Um, Elias' song to Bailey was mm -hmm. oddly sexual and unnecessary. I kind of thought it was funny. I thought it was kind of funny. It in wasn't. A my, sense, it wasn't my top, but it was on my goods. The 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 fact that I'm my concern is how much sexual stuff they're throwing in at this point. Oh yeah, they're way they're going way overboard with. They're going a bit much, and his whole shtick with Dana the week before, he's you know telling Drake that he slept with his wife and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't understand the necessity for that, mm -hmm. and I, feel, I don't find that good. Luck. I feel like the two we'll call flagship shows have been doing that a lot as like a crutch, and I've not been happy with it. It's been, it's been it's it's felt very old, and it feels especially very old today when you like. We, like, we, we talk so much about people that we don't like, that are dick in hand. He's yep. there. And we talk, about, uh, we talk about other people in this industry who get removed from their jobs for shit. And then this old thing's there, and it's just kind of uncomfortable and cringy. Yeah, yeah it's it was. stupid. And it's live. And you didn't need that to build up a match between Bailey and Dana Brooke. You could have just had a match with them and it would have been believable. Mm -hmm. You know? Because Bailey's constantly talking shit to the entire roster and Dana's constantly fired up for trying to prove herself. You didn't need Elias to get all sexual to Bailey to make a fight with Dana Brooke happen. You just didn't need to. I thought Dana looked okay and it was cool to see good. her Yeah, it was cool to see her do work. Yeah. That was something I'm I was happy to see. She needs to be out there more. It was a good match, a bit short, but it was good. Yeah. Um Nikki Cross and Alexa Bliss starting the match with this giant plane. They did what? What? So they, they, wasn't it they started the match, like before the match they started fighting the ramp? Oh yeah, they're uh, fighting in the backstage area, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that was alright. Um, let's see, Shinsuke and Cesaro versus Heavy Machinery, I thought it was a pretty good match. That yeah. was pretty good. I thought it was really good of those, um, everyone involved and Sami Zayn and all I, that. I like, I like the, uh, the backstage before <coughs> where Otis... <coughs> Give, excuse me. Gives Sammy a uh, a ham. Yeah, that was and, and Sammy's like, "This what is this? The worst yeah. gift ever!" Yeah. And like poor Otis was just crushed. He was really trying to be yeah. a good guy. Yeah, he just wanted to give you a good good old uh, Wisconsin oh, ham. Wisconsin ham. You don't like ham. And then they tossed it to the ground. And then Cesaro threw that ham to the ground. And boy, happy birthday to the ground. <laughs> Fuck up, man. Yeah, that was a, that was a fucking bad decision. Bad choice. Yeah. yeah. Grumpy up. I hate Cesaro's new theme. Speaking of, I what? I thought that was the same thing he's had. No. No, no, no. There's now ankles. What? <laughs> the gear is what I, oh. I don't like any of it, but the gear is what bugs me the most because I'm always like, why are you wearing capris? Why are you looking at his ankles? What? Okay. I'm okay with he's got like strong looking ankles. He, they, I, they, no, they're very defined. They're very weird because it just doesn't look. It, it looks weird as hell to me. I it's bought. European, man. Yeah, it's the jogger <sighs> cut European style. There's a lot of things that are European that are not great. What? Name one. That was heavily racist, racially charged comments. Yeah, by yeah microtransgression. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 1900 to 1946. Uh, what do you guys think of the Bray Wyatt Miz <laughs> shit? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And here's my problem with it, is Bray Wyatt is such a good actor. And The Miz is not. And it <laughs> highlights how so bad, bad of an actor Miz is. 
And I'll tell you what I think it is. Because I've been in some plays growing up, and I've been around a lot of actors in New York and such. I feel like there's two types of actors. People who like to get into characters and think characters are very interesting. And then there's people who want to prove that they're a good actor because I'm an actor and I act now. And I feel like you've got both of those guys in this story where Miz is like, I'm an actor. I act and I am an actor and I'm going to prove that I'm acting to you. Acting? And Bray's just all like, what if I did this? Wouldn't it look crazy? Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And I think, that's, I think that you see that it highlighted here that Miz is so into himself and so into proving himself as an actor that it comes out super phony and just vapid. Where Bray is so into this character that it comes out so genuine and terrifying. Miz is Johnny Depp now. <laughs> Pretty what? much. Uh, maybe. Bray, Bray Wyatt is Johnny Depp then. Acting? Yeah. But it, it, it's, it, it really does highlight how bad at this Miz is. And also, again, it's this, the whole theme of the story is the thing I find personally so frustrating with the Miz is I hate Miz as the... You know, don't you fuck with my family. Because it comes up family every week because he's got a kid and a fucking TV show about his kid and family. Yeah. And I'm this honorable, wonderful person who is its a shit character. He's better as an asshole. Yeah. yeah. And, and it just, to me, comes off as a bigger asshole. And yeah. when this happened, I liked all the Bray parts. I thought it was stupid and awesome. I hated... The only things I liked with Miz were I was like, okay, if I can see this is a bad B movie, I'm okay with his shitty acting about, oh, what's this? Oh, and then running up the stairs and making Maurice go in first. Yeah, go in there. Go like, in there, motherfucker. What the fuck was that? Bitch, I don't get hit. Go up. Yeah. I don't want to get killed. You do it first. Yeah. So fucking shitty. Yeah. And then they even showed you. Here's the thing I don't get is he's clearly supposed to be the face in this because he has to be, right? Right. Because. Someone is literally breaking in to murder his children. <laughs> and somehow they found a way for me to boo the guy trying to not have his kids murdered. Yep. And, like, they even showed Miz talking mad shit to Daniel Bryan on Talking Smack. The one big moment where I was like, oh, yeah, fuck this guy for all eternity forever because he's a piece of shit. Talking shit like that to a dude who's got a legitimate injury who's going battling depression about it. And then Miz is just calling him out that way. I was like, fuck this guy forever. And then they remind you of that in this whole thing. Like, I'm trying to protect my family. I'm a good dad. I'm a good wife. I'm all this bullshit. And then he reminds you of what a fucking scumbag he is. And then you're all like, yeah, go ahead. Take his kids. Do stuff to him. I don't care. Yeah, we can't really uh, Jeffrey Epstein school. sympathize for him. Yeah, there's no sympathy for the Miz. No, it's, he it, could be hit by a bus right before the show and they could have a whole serious moment about, oh, thank God Miz isn't on tonight. Well, it's also like that, that part where they keep attaching him to Daniel Bryan. I always think like, this has been the longest fuck you storyline in your career has been you and Daniel Bryan. Mm-hmm. I can't think of a time when you guys were on the same page, yeah. even in NXT. You guys were kind of dicks to each other. Like, yeah. this sucks. This just is god awful. Yeah. I, I wonder though, how can you make... Like acknowledge Bray's of like Bray and the Fiend as a face. You, but you it's have fucked to, up because he is. How about this? Play into the idea of like the like kind of similar to the original idea of the Fireflies. Play into the idea of him. He's taken over. Like just how they announce he's, he's taken over, as you can hear it. Well, I think like, the idea right now is Bray Wyatt himself as a face, and then the Fiend is supposed to be the heel. I think actually the whole Fiend dynamic is so much more complex than that at this point. Yeah. I don't think you can watch a Bray match and say, who's the heel, who's the face. I just don't. I was saying that in the idea that The Miz is meant to be a heroic figure in this. Yeah. However, no one's going to cheer him against somebody as incredible as Bray Wyatt. So that puts a heel or a face in heel perspective, but you have this back and forth where a guy defending his family is somehow frowned upon now. I don't think you can look at the Bray Wyatt character or anything around him outside of his bubble. You know what I mean? The Bray bubble is that he is such an incredible dynamic in this this world right now, this universe, that nothing that happens within his storyline will ever match what we traditionally know to be wrestling, or good or bad. He's just too popular. Yeah. At the end of the day, what makes a face is or a heel is how the crowd reacts to you. If they're booing you, it doesn't matter what you said, you're a heel now. If they're cheering you, it doesn't matter what you just did, you're a face now. But he fucks up that whole dynamic. Well, I think it's a I think it would be interesting if they invested in it and tried to make that compelling. Because it could be something like to me, it could be something kind of 
one of those big holy crap moments if they can figure out a way to acknowledge that he's popular and is a face in a way that isn't corny and doesn't change the character. Wasn't it? I guess we weren't there yet. All right. (laughs) That brings us to the end of SmackDown. New Day versus King Corbin and Dolph Ziggler. Um, I don't think it was a bad match. No. No, it was a bad match. But it was just, it was the last hour, and I tend to kind of space out towards the end. Yeah, and I think this was one of those unfortunate, more of the same greatness. Exactly. Sort of like when, like Seth and Dolph's feud over the IC title got so boring so fast because it was like the same good every time. Yeah. And you're like, okay, I'm not feeling a different feeling this time than the last time. Yeah. Um, but it was otherwise, you know, four great people in the ring doing what they do, and I mean, God, Corbin's so good at pissing off the crowd; it's incredible. There was. Big E did like his spear that he does yeah. between the ropes. Yeah, he landed hard on his shoulder, man. I was like worried that he yeah. had hurt his arm or something that day. Mm. Well, I mean, he came back the next day. I know, I know, but I was, uh, <clears throat> I saw people on Twitter say like, "Damn, I hope Big E's okay." Like, oh, and it was, I guess, referencing that. It looked pretty nasty, but yeah, he performed it the next day, so whatever. Yeah, so he was all right. It's but, all good, baby. Um, yeah, yeah. He's, a, he's a bad motherfucker, dude. And I think that it would be a shame if Big E was out at the same time as Woods. Yeah. That'd be Especially with Kingston horrible. never winning the championship. Yeah. According it's, to continuity. If Woo. that happened, I would be worried. I mean, my hope would be, you know, your hope, if that ever occurred, would be like that Kofi would be put up to a higher level. But then yeah. my fear is that he's going to flounder and it might end up being the worst thing for the New Day ever. They might just yeah. basically... I think if another person gets hurt, they all need to take time away. Because yeah. they can't have one person there. they got to all just be out. They can focus on the podcasting, but they cannot have one person floundering. They have to be utilized, or they have to all be out. And the podcast is good, so I could really oh, yeah. do with some longer episodes. It got so frustrating. I was like, no, don't end it. I like this shit. Yeah. Don't, I don't Stop. like that they have a 45 minute cut to let them go. Because the, the, to me, the I think best. Episode two was like 35 minutes. I was like, you're going to be shitting me you're ending this right now. The best podcasts to me are the long ones because then you get the good stories. Like, the reason I think that something that wrestles so awesome is they go and then they keep going. You can have advertising in the middle. Give them time to do something because you'll get more interesting shit. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Well, I think that brings us to the end of that SmackDown, too. Just kind of going through some stuff. Because we're trying to get highlights and lowlights of each thing. And I'll be honest, it wasn't the, the day-to-day this week that really did it for me outside of that triple threat. Um, did you get to watch NWA? I did not. But I'd love to hear you guys. I know about the ending of it. I know that he appears. I I didn't watch it. Yeah, I gotta go do my vows and shit to my family. I'm sorry my bipolar disorder made this a lot less, a lot more fun of week, asshole. It did. It yeah. really <laughs> fucked it up this week. <laughs> when you were messaging me, I was like, I was like, I was in the middle of like an anxiety thing. I was like, um, no. I'm gonna Jesus treat Christ. you the way that I wish Nigel would treat Morrow. I'm Nigel. motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> I don't give a shit. About your med- no. <laughs> I'm curious to see if the medication that they put me on makes me reference 90s hip hop more. Yeah. yeah, that'll be interesting to know. Oh, that would Can be you interesting. Imagine, like, Nigel just slaps on the back of the neck and just, like, fucking watch him call it! You know? like, <laughs> <laughs> Gets really quiet. Yeah. I'm really sorry. I didn't mean. To, yeah. you know. I don't know. And then he's just like, do you want a lorazepam, Nigel? Yeah. <laughs> um, into, into the fire! I was here for Into the Fire. You watched it with us. No, no, I'm thinking of today's. I'm sorry. Oh, bad. yeah, I watched it. Into the fire. That's why I'm drinking. It's so much. A pizza. song of fire. Oh, pizza. Oh, pizza, wings, and beer. It's not a bad day. Well, it's not a bad day. I just, I cannot move after. Yeah, no, that's what makes it good. <laughs> that's what makes it good. Um, into the fire. Um, what do you think about the set in general? The way that they did the set from the the stairs. Like I said during the live stream, that it was very Lucha Underground esque. Oh, okay, I like that. Yeah, it was really cool. They came down from the stairs. They came out with music and all that. It was a lot like Lucha Underground. It was very cool. I, d- I always liked that that set though. 
Because it's a good way of interacting with the crowd. It's a good way of giving presence to a small ass venue. Mm -hmm. I like the coming down from the stairs part of it. Mm -hmm. I do too. I don't think it's great for Aaron Stevens in question mark. It gives them too much time with the crowd. (laughs) Yeah, their entrance was particularly long. It was incredibly long because they were really doing the whole yay, boo, boo yay, yay, boo. boo. Like, we fucking get were it. Were they doing it every stair? Yep. Almost. Oh, yeah. fuck that, no. Every stair on the way there and the way back, and then they even popped out again. They even cut away from them and started having the commentators talk about stuff, and they were still doing it. You could hear it. And you're just like, stop! They're milking it. Yeah. <gasps> the first match, though, was pretty good. It wasn't it the, uh, our boy. Yeah, Eli Drake. Eli, Eli Drake. Drake. Let me talk to ya! Versus Ken Anderson. Versus Ken Anderson. That piece of shit. Anderson. Just kidding. Anderson, right. Anderson. 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 Ken Anderson, Anderson. <laughs> Anderson. Ken Kenneth Anderson. Andy Anderson. Anderson. Ken Kenneth Kennedy. Oh, shit, never mind. Anderson. <laughs> he did the whole Anderson thing again. Yeah. The double Anderson. Not a fan. Um, it was an incredible match. Great way to start the show off. Um, let's see. We'll go over just highlights and lowlights on it, really. Uh, I mean, yeah. Tasha Steeles and Thunder Rosa, I thought, was the best women's match of the whole night. I thought it was fantastic. Yeah, it was pretty good. Um, Thunder Rosa went over. She's pretty over with the crowd. I, I'm sure she's going to be in the title picture eventually. Yeah, I think so. I think she's a star. But they didn't have the one title all defended at this? No, Woodland's title was not defended. The champion wrestled, but it was in a... It was in a tag match. Yeah. It was relatively underwhelming. It was. Question um, mark versus the Murdoch of Trevor's. Uh, that was good. Um, that had a big a big pop at the end there. Trev, uh, question mark going for the double karate. They had the angle to it because uh, what had happened was Murdoch disrespected the uh, flag, the old flag of Mongrovia, where question mark comes from, and it enraged him, and he doubled up on his finisher and used the double spike. Instead of the one spike, it was the double. Pow. Took down Trevor Murdoch. So he fingered him harder. Fingered him twice as hard. Right in the throat. That's right. (laughs) I'm going to take you to prom. But I I don't know. I'm thinking less and less that um, question mark is Eugene. I'm starting to think it might be Josephus. I think it was supposed to be a gimmick for Josephus who was being suspended. I think it was supposed to be the gimmick for him, for everyone to boo and hate. And be like, nah, fuck this. And he was going to do the big reveal of um, Josephus. And I think that it didn't work. And now he's stuck as the question mark. <laughs> he's like forever <laughs> stuck as yeah. the question mark. He's like, well, this is my thing now. Well, takes hat, takes hat off. Big reveal. Nothing. I'll just put this back on. Then oh, he gets yeah. the... Woo! Yeah. Yay! Yay. Uh, Rock and Roll Express won. They retained the tag team titles. Oh, that was How a was lot that match? The, here was the deal. is Watching it, it was like, what the fuck is happening? But somehow the fucking rock and roll winning made made it okay because we kept talking about how the wild cards were doing so poorly together As a tag. that they look like a shitty tag team. And we kept mentioning, it's like, why do they look like they're not communicating well? Why are they sloppy? What's going on with them? Rock and Roll Express looks like the better team. And then they went over and you're like, did I get fucking worked? <laughs> <laughs> Let's figure out a way to get these old guys over. We're going to be shit at our job. Yeah, we'll just get okay. shittier. <laughs> and going into the uh, pay-per-view, I I swore up and down that they were going to lose the belts. Like, oh, we're just going to... They just had this big payoff before to get the name. Oh, I think everyone. The news. I think that anyone lost money on that. Because um, I don't think a single person was like, well, they're definitely retaining it. Oh, this the is company. your your favorite. So, Allison K. So, in the beginning... So, Thunder Rosa had the match, right? Oh, wait. And then right after that match, Allison K.'s partner... Um, Ashley Vox. Ashley Vox comes out to attack Thunder Rosa for no fucking reason. Thunder Rosa just beats the shit out of her, yes. breaks her arm because she's like, "Who the fuck is you, though?" And then uh, she can't wrestle, so Allison K comes out by herself. Marty Bell and Melina come out, and then the big reveal for Allison K's tag team partner, fucking ODB. That's the person who came out drunk as shit. In the That's match. the one. I really hate that character. So much. I cannot stand that character. I Holding hate. up her titty like all the time. Kept going like that. And she'd slap her crotch like I'm supposed yeah. to be Did like. Did she come out with a flask again? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's my yeah. thing is like, look, like we've had people be fired for wrestling drunk. Yeah. It's, it, yeah. it fucking, I, I hate that. I'm not a dude who doesn't drink and gets nasty with people about like, yo, don't drink around me. I'm clearly, I don't have a fucking problem. I'm here with you guys. <laughs> 
but you make me drink club. Yeah, that's fair. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's probably why I did it. Yeah. Um, but it is something there that I feel like that doesn't. It. I don't want to be someone who's like, it sends a bad message. It just looks shit. It's a bad look to have somebody come out and act drunk as fuck when you've had people, like, again, fired for being drunk performing. Yep. Like, yeah. like it it calls to mind, like, we talked about the idea of the playwright for hell. That's a cool thing after. Yeah. The nice. idea of this character who's just like, I'm here to be fucked up. No, I don't like it. And I don't like yeah. some big old drunk, dirty bitch. It's like being at a family reunion for me. Yeah. Well, Cakes. Not a fan. Not a fan. No. It was funny. I mean, producer here, I've never seen a drunk woman act like that. It was just like, why are you grabbing everything? That's a good point. Who does you wanna this? You want to be invited to and the Clump Family Radio? <laughs> I've been to... It's no, not I mean, February. <laughs> I've been, you know, bar hopping for a long time in New York, and I've never seen that. I've seen a lot of stuff. Mm. Not that. <laughs> yeah. Not even when it's like Long Island Nights? This was one where I felt it's like that it, um, it even it brought down... Allison K, I felt mm-hmm. like being surrounded by all of that because I felt like Marty Bell and Allison K were the best two workers in there, mm-hmm. and Melina and ODB were bringing down the rest of the rest of the match, so much so that it was interesting to watch how little they put ODB and Melina into the match. Mm-hmm. ODB was primarily like the hot tag stuff, right? Yeah, I would call it a hot tag, but yeah. hot uh, and, tag. Yeah, and the moves. I wasn't even interested in her moves. <coughs> it was just kind of like gross to watch, honestly. Yeah, it was absolutely, it was, I was, I was actually, I could have done without that whole match. Um, after that, Aaron Stevens won the NWA National Championship against Ricky Starks and Boom Boom Colta Cabana. Boom Boom. In, in, his, room. in his classic signature new trunks and hot pink knee pads. Yeah, mm-hmm. he did a lot of hiding behind the Christmas tree that was up and stuff. and Typical heel stuff. Um, yeah, and it was a little more jokey than I think that I was expecting out of them on this one, but it was, it was, it was fun. Match. Maybe for Pokemon and Aaron Stevens, uh, you should expect comedy, I suppose. I think they should have put that, so the order of that kind of, because you had that kind of hot garbage pile of a woman's match, it sounds like, that should have been way earlier in the night then. Because it feels like you go from, you know, good match, go, good match to that, and then the comedy match, it do, it's funny, but it doesn't... I don't know. The problem I, with that match is it was a comedy match that was funny and otherwise good, but it was right after two matches that looked sloppy and bad. Yes. Because the tag match and the women's match back to back didn't come off like great, crisp wrestling to begin with. Even though, like I said, I think Rock and Roll Express may have been working us to make the other team look sloppy, but it still felt sloppy while you're watching it. Um, so yeah. you follow that up by a comedy thing, and you're all like, "What happened to our wrestling, man?" Um, and then it was followed up by Nick Aldis and James Storm in a two out of three falls, which was fantastic. Mm-hmm. If I remember correctly. No. One of the one of the pinfalls was a bit shit, right? The second one. It was some weird roll up thing that was like a little weird and they both had their shoulders down and it was just the camera angle. I don't know, maybe it was the camera angle that made it look like both their shoulders were down, or it was the camera angle that, you know, gave it away. Um but other than that, I thought it was really good overall. Yeah, I don't have a whole lot to say about like move for move, but the, the, those two vets putting on a good match, I didn't think it was worthy of a the world's heavyweight championship, you know, caliber. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. I mean, I thought it was pretty good, solid. I thought for, it was worthy of, of being oh, a yeah. match. Yeah, for sure. Like especially on that card. You, you see why they're the guys closing the show, for sure. Yeah. I even thought it was interesting the way they did the Tim Storm and uh, Brian Hebner stuff. Oh, yeah. Well, they did a good job with that, adding the refs a little bit in the story as well. And they flipped the coin, and it wasn't Tim Storm. They just made it the legit ref. Brian and Hebner. Hebner got knocked the fuck out. Mm-hmm. They did a fucking turn him inside out bump, man. He did a full-on fucking flip. I was all like, holy shit, he's dead. He's dead. But he's not, but he's not. Brian Hebner's still alive. Um, and then it happens, the big thing, my big moment. The big reveal. The big reveal. The oh shit moment. The oh shit moment of NWA power. Into the fire. Into power. the fire. <laughs> <sighs> anyway, the villain appears. The fucking lights go out. Was it, Nick Aldis was cutting a promo. He's like, there's not a man alive. He says. And then the lights go out, and I was like, "Bam, Undertaker!" Fucking Undertaker! <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Oh shit!" 
Um, and we, we got to watch along if you guys want to see our live reactions. Where we're yeah, like, I like seeing that. Oh, you guys are good, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, and then Scroll comes out. Fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. I did not see that coming. Nobody, I think, saw that coming. No. I, he said um, that the locker room didn't know. Yeah, it was, today he said that. Yeah, today yeah. he said that the locker room didn't know. It was just him and the other guy, I guess, that knew. Oh, my God. Yeah. Did Aldis know? That I don't even know if Aldis knew. Yeah. Good question. I, I'm sure. Because if he didn't know, then Aldis did an awesome job. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> knowing exactly what to do. I think Which all this <clears throat> new because I know they're really close. They, yeah, they are been, friends. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I think um, this is a good thing for everyone. I think this is good for NWA because it's going to be like a Skrull has some name. I think it's great for Skrull because Skrull doesn't have as much of a name. Um, he is he is great a great name for the Smarks, like yeah. for the Marks and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this can bring a lot of uh, more attention to NWA, but also. It can get scrolled in something that this is something free that's easier to watch in the Ring of Honor because it's been harder and harder to see his work and he's been diminishing in what he is because that's what I was hearing that in the Ring of Honor they've been kind of burying him they've been kind of putting his character in not the just that but it's just their it's hard to watch their shit it's hard to watch their shit in general just in general and yeah. they don't get a lot of exposure they've also I mean all and also like there's been long talk about Ring of Honor's qualities diminish so rapidly. Mm -hmm. Like it's since they had the their like last exodus of people to, I, I, I think AEW didn't hurt WWE. I think AEW hurt Ring of Honor, mm -hmm. and a big part of this Ring of Honor Ring of Honor hurt itself by starting their exclusive contracts, mm -hmm. which a lot of people kind of like know, yeah, like dipped out there. Um, and they lost a lot of people who would have gone through a lot of promotions. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I think this is good. I don't think he's gonna be here long. I think. I think Skrull might it might be a one off, which is great, and then he'll appear in AEW or something. Or, shit, I'd love to see him in NXT. I think he'd be fantastic. I think he'd be perfect for NXT, especially with the uh, Undisputed Era, a villain Enterprises versus Undisputed Era. I'll take that. Any war games, fucking let's do it. That would be a good war game. Um, but I agree. I think this is only for a few months. Um, the next, I mean, shit. The, there's already a pay per view in January, late mm -hmm. late January, yeah. right? So when is Royal Rumble? Late January. Wait, well, yeah. What's first? No, he's not gonna be in the Rumble. That, no, come on, I could always be hopeful. That'd be great if he. Would. I mean, that would be hopeful, the, sure. Yeah, okay. They need honestly. I think WWE needs more big pops in the Rumble because the past few years they've been okay, but they're they're missing that. Like I mean, the, the last big pop was AJ Styles, sixteen. They haven't had. It was amazing. They haven't uh, come was close. Huge, yeah. Becky. Becky was well, that was her win. That was he the means, win. like someone coming yeah. out. Yeah, I'm talking yeah. like the entrance. Yeah, the surprise. Because that's like the the most. Like even they even have, they haven't even had I like I just like Porky Pig that they haven't even had many mild surprises. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. I I would like watching the Royal Rumble and seeing like we brought this jobber and we brought this random dude from this promotion or we brought you know this person or this guy you haven't seen. I was like oh that's cool like someone well, went off. We're not seeing that really. Because what they used to push was they used to push that it was the one time a year that everyone had a chance at a world title shot. And so they would push that over and over again. Anyone's got a chance. All you got to do is win the Rumble. And it was constantly people vying to get into it. You'd see people like, you know, pulling those fucking ping pong balls. And then there was always surprises because they want their shot at the world title. Like They used to push the Rumble as a world title number one contender match more. And now they're really pushing story through it. Mm -hmm. um, where it was a little more standalone. This is the one time a year everyone has a shot at the title. Yeah. And so I think that's why they've pulled away from it. Plus they have 150 people on their roster. They don't need to bring in a bunch of people you haven't seen in a you while. You know who's like the perfect guy for the Royal Rumble? Orange Cassidy. <laughs> what? I would love that so much. Just <laughs> imagine the, the big... pop. Imagine the pop Orange Cassidy would get. It would be the bit. It would be a Rumble. half pop, and it would be the best half pop. Half pop because it'd be like cheers, and then huh? huh? And he's walking, and you just you have this contingent of just like oh my god, and then people are like fuck is this? And mass confusion at the same time. Yeah, Excitement and confusion. That that <laughs> big that big lady from the set. Where is the Royal Rumble this year? Houston. Houston. That yeah. big lady. That big Houston lady who watches WWE every week. She's like. Fuck is this? <laughs> As he just kind of saunters See, out. People are putting pictures of uh, Cassidy and Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Oh, that was funny. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's pretty accurate too. Yeah. 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 Um, I think Marty Scroll in NWA is awesome for everyone involved because yeah. I think it brings it brings a lot of eyes to NWA. Yeah. Um, I think it brings a lot of legitimacy to both of them together. 
Um, and I think that it's a good time for Marty to build up his the commodity that is him. But also, yeah, I want I want an American to win the world's heavyweight championship. Yeah, let's put it back on an American. We okay. need America to have it. Wait, Nick Aldis is an English American. Well, he's with a country star. I mean, he's married to a country country girl. Yeah. Where is he from? Because his accent is very. American. He's from the UK, dude. Yeah. He has no accent. <laughs> you're so full of shit, man. No, when I hear him, he, so, he does have an accent. Yeah, not really. Laugh, it comes and goes, and it's not. It's. I'm gonna knock I think I made out. a comment about that a couple yeah. weeks back. He's got a thin accent, it's, so he's probably from London. He's something. very Americanized, but he's yeah. from the UK, and he's built from the UK. Yeah, yeah. brother-in-law. That's His why he wears that, got more of an English accent. That's than why him. he wears that fancy jacket and looks all regal and shit. Yeah, he thinks he's better than us because he's from the UK. This is English stereotype. True. But it's all true. English typing. It's all true. T typing. Fucking red coats. Fucking blue coat. He wears blue coats. Oh yeah. Oh. He's fucking blue um, coat. And I think it's a really cool thing for Marty to take this time to uh, up his value, his yes. name value right now. Because That's coming out of Ring Honor is mm-hmm. not great. So going into NWA, he can show his value and then go to anyone and say, look at what I can do with as little as I was given on my way out. Yeah. And except, except impact. Don't go there. Yeah, that's yeah, that's, so a, that's that. a lose lose. But he also like it is such a like he could say I did this in this small ass promotion. I think that's the biggest thing because, like, I think this puts NWA above Ring of Honor. Oh, for sure. I think Ring NWA has been doing better than Ring of Honor. Period. And the reason being is it's got a unique style that Ring of Honor has never been able to regain after its first loss of people like Kevin Owens and stuff like that. Yeah. It. Is easy to access, which Ring of Honor has never been easy to access. The the best you got is I'm gonna go look for highlights on YouTube of people who put it up there, and are hope we're hoping it's not gonna be lost. Well, it's on Fight TV every week. Yeah, but that's the thing is. Here's the thing though: is I've been following Ring of Honor and Fight TV for almost two years now, and I've only watched about half of an episode. Because I keep going like, oh, I'm gonna watch it. I'll just put it in here. I'll be in my watch list. My watch list is a ton of unwatched episodes of Ring of Honor. Well, it's kind of like... It, it, I get alerted when it hits, and I'm always like, eh. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's sad that it's... I mean, there's been a lot of just weird, bad press about it. I, The only people I know in Ring of Honor right now are, like, PCO. Oh, he's a champ. Yeah. yeah. He's well, a champ. He's the champ. He's a goddamn champ. I'd love to... He'd be... He won't, but he would be amazing in the Royal Rumble. Oh, that'd be cool. That'd be a great pop-out. I think, I think PCO has a better shot at getting in the Rumble than... Girl, a lot of other independents just because he's he's had a WWE contract in the past, he's yeah, worked yeah. there before. He's like, I'm a legend now, guys. Yeah, yeah. I can do legends that. contract, PCO, yeah, boom. Um, fuck, it's gone. <laughs> Your thought came and it went. Yeah. Let's move on to TLC. Your brain clumped. Yeah, my, my brain just clumped into pieces. We, we, we already said our, our stuff about Marty Squirrel, probably short time using it to build up his uh stock. Yeah, I think um, I don't think he's going to win the title. I'll tell you this: I want him in NXT more than I want him in AEW because I know his friends in AEW, but I don't think he'll be booked right in AEW. I don't. I haven't seen them put forth put forth anybody on the way that I feel like a strong booking should look. Yeah, I think he'd be given a proper faction and gimmick in NXT. I think he would. Although, what I'd really like to see in NWA, and we touched on it there, I want to see. Although, if he's only there for a little bit, we probably won't. But I wanted to see a villain thing start up with him and Luke Harper. Mm. You're assuming Harper goes to NWA. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 100%. Lee. But I think that if if Harper and villain both went to NWA, you could have some major fucking story there. You know? Where otherwise, I think that it's easy to have Brody get lost in the mix wherever he goes. I don't think him getting lost in the mix in WWE was... Because he has this overwhelming star power that just has to get out. You I know what I mean? I think that you need focus. and you, I think that there's, with NWA being a smaller roster, I think you could get that focus and you could really build a character off of this is the style of wrestler that I am. I think you get lost in the mix wherever else he goes. Marty Skrull, with the idea of like creating a new version of Villain Enterprises in the WWE sounds fucking amazing. Because it could see, well, like I could see like Pete Dunne. I know Pete Dunne is he's strong but he's been losing and mm-hmm. I think that'd be really cool because I think it'd be cool to have him with Marty's girl yeah. oh yeah um, or fuck uh, not killing Dan Woodward well I don't know I, I just I, I don't know what kind of I don't know if they play any 
past story between Adam Cole and Marty Scurll, but Marty Scurll is the one that basically booted Adam Cole from yeah. Bullet Club. Oh, he cool. beat the shit out of that. That hit with that umbrella was amazing. Yeah, that's cool. Um, yeah, so they could at least do a wink and a nod to it, I'm sure. Um, but I do feel like the NWA is what most people are talking about right now because of Marty. I think that's fucking awesome for all of them. Into the fire! Into I, the fire! I think they they came into it with the uh, the need to surprise the most and they actually lived up to it. Because a lot of people weren't expecting a lot. No. If there's ever a time to surprise, they did it. And that's the thing. You you have to do it. And, and who hasn't done it? Hmm? Who hasn't done it? Surprised? Yeah. I think I would say AEW is not surprised. No fucking surprises. Right. That's why I keep saying it's such a bummer. Like they need just. I think that's all AEW needs to really like push them into like a level where a lot of people pay attention is a big <coughs> surprise pop of something. I think NWA figured that out long before AEW has. Well, and also, I mean, to be fair, WWE recently a lot. Some of their like their pay per views too. It's like yeah. that's been missing. It's been like. Cool, that was a show. And yeah. NWA taking Marty Scurll is like, hey, AEW fans, you know this guy, right? Yeah. You like this guy, right? Oh, that's a good point, too. He's with us now. Yeah, look who we got. We, I mean, we don't got Cornette, sorry. But we got <laughs> this guy, if you don't mind. Villain Enterprises, Bull, yeah. Bullet Club. Yeah. You know? Oh, sweet, it's so sweet. <laughs> okay, it's like, don't know how to do it. It's sweet. <laughs> <laughs> it's true, school. though. It's true. No. Yeah. Hey, look, kitties, look what we got, kitties. You yeah, fucking pandering. So anyway, that, that's uh, the end of Saturday. Because yeah. we, didn't, we didn't watch any of the other stuff. The ROH pay-per-view. Didn't watch it, but it was cool to hear PCO became the champion. PCO. Yeah. Really cool. PCO. Such a cool story with him that he went from, like, ba- obscurity and not doing great to where he is now. He's fucking... It's not just, like... He's him just be- fucking. He's just it's fucking. just him fucking. <laughs> he could lay some dick down probably. This <laughs> but it went from him being like, really not doing great to I like. I think he lost that eye. Yeah. Dude, okay. he's he's the Frankenstein, the, the monster. Strap on phone. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eiffel Tower. Oh no! Not gonna be a highlight now. <laughs> oh, no. Um, PCO so lost his eye to an Eiffel Tower. That takes us to TLC. I didn't see any pre-show stuff. Um, the only thing on the pre-show was Humberto versus Andrade. Uh, and the big takeaway there is Humberto won, busted open Andrade's eye, Saw and then that. Zelina and Andrade were like, fuck you, no, fuck you, dude, no, yeah, fuck, fuck you. you man. And then they dropped yeah, it. Fuck you. They yep. built up that, like, they, like, kind of like, oh, Tiff, and then. That's the second time they've done it, though. And they did another one on Raw a little bit. I really? didn't feel like it was There's still that there tension. On. There's still that tension. Well, I think it should have accelerated more. What? 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 No, I because I remember sitting my hat there and it was moved. That's all. It's over there. Yeah, I know. Because I have a mic here. That's there's fine. a mic there. That's dude. fine. Fuck. I just did a double take really quick. Because of a goddamn hat that's right there, it's a fucking mic. It dude. wasn't a bit. It wouldn't have been so pronounced if I didn't have this fucking Santa helmet. Just. It is. It's all over the place, dude. <laughs> Make it pointy. It works out. Yeah, hard. you got a flaccid Santa hat. What do you? What think's gonna happen? <laughs> Waving it around, wiggling at us. Oh, that's good. <laughs> As high alert. If it didn't have the white stripes or the or the poof ball on top, it'd be the hat it wore for clumps cooking corn. Yeah. Oh no. That's a good point. Oh no. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> no. <laughs> I was surprised they opened up with Revival versus New Day, but they did not let down. I thought that match was incredible. Mm-hmm. That was the one we kept seeing when we were taking our photos and videos. Yeah, that's oh. what we were watching live uh, from uh, his wedding. Big E taking ladders to the balls. Yeah, but like, if anyone can, he probably flex those nuts. Yeah, he probably just deflect them. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that dude works like a hip, out as... Like a hip thrust? He's yeah, like, he just hip thrust it in there. Nah. Bam! Just bam. Kind of bend the ladder like, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just... They just wasn't like, supposed to be a work ladder either. Yeah. It's a real ladder. But it's like you got the gimmick. That wasn't gimmicked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, they're two solid tag teams, so... Oh, yeah. With with like opposing styles too, which is nice. I think they work so well together yes. because of that. They work really, really well. I think, I mean, it it makes me really miss the Usos because the Usos really fit in well with this. Yeah, yeah. they would they would have yeah exactly good point. Yeah. And yeah, these, but they done fucked up. Yep, they and done fucked. We don't have another tag team that really can mesh with other people. We have decent tag teams, I would say, but they don't mesh with other tag teams like. I would even say the Viking Raiders. Yeah, they're decent. They don't mesh with anyone. It doesn't like, like it just it's steamrolling through people. Yeah. That's it. 
Well, kind of. And yeah. we'll get to that on Monday. But. Yeah. Um, what did you guys see? Did you get to watch the launch of the pay-per-view? Yeah, a little bit. Uh, did you see Aleister Black for Spuddy Murphy? That was a great I match. Thought, yeah. That match seemed really brutal to me. Yeah, There was dude. a lot of times where I was like, they're just fucking each other up. They're, they're just... I think they're mad at This you. is a shoot. <laughs> yeah, I was like, I think they was... Yeah, there was definitely parts where I was all like, nah, he slipped, and then Black just is laying into him as a receipt. And then Murphy's, <laughs> Murphy's just proving a point, like, hey, don't fuck with me, dude. Just It was an accident. You're just, fucking you're just watching the exchange go back and forth yeah. the entire match. <laughs> That's how I felt. The whole time I was getting nervous. I was like, guys, just fucking go back to... Pretending. Go back to the script. <laughs> Go back to the script. <laughs> like when we yeah. were watching the uh, uh, Roman Reigns, <clears throat> Brock Lesnar, wrestling WrestleMania match. Yeah. They're pissed at each other, right? Because yeah. they are legit fucking each other up. Yeah, this is getting bad. That's and how then, Brock works, though, Brock. And then when, when uh, Brady got Aleister Black into that one like submission, mm-hmm. and Aleister's just like wiggling there and bleeding, and like I was all like, I think he's like legit stretching him. <laughs> like yeah. I think he's all like, are you fucking gonna calm down now, dude? Are you gonna fucking relax now? Like that's what it looked like, and then Alistair's like, "Thank you, fight, <laughs> fight, <laughs> like, uncle, yeah. uncle, uncle, okay, fight." Yeah, it was all like, "Fuck." Right, I man. think this was the perfect match for Alistair Black to. I hope we see more of him. He's this was great, and it made Buddy Murphy look really good too. Like nobody looked bad here. This is, I think, the match to me it was the match of the night. They both look like legitimate fucking fighters who were in an actual fight. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if it was supposed to or not, but goddamn. Yeah. yeah, freaking Black came out with bloody nose and all the... Yeah. I mean, I guess you're going to pick a fight with me. I <laughs> yeah, motherfucker did. Motherfucker did. I feel like this was a, a, like the best surprise. Like, go out there, it can be a match, and it le- I, it ended as like, that was fucking great. Oh, hey, yeah. Lexi. Lexi, what's up, man, Lexi? what's up? Feel free to derail us at any time. We're just getting through TLC, then we got Raw, and then we got Presence. So we're just kind of getting through it. Uh, did you get to watch? Um, I think you came through on the NWA watch along. Did you get to watch TLC? Um, watch wrestling. But yeah, I thought this, this this match was I thought pretty fucking brutal and, and it was fun. It was entertaining, and you know, a lot of times when I watch wrestling, I tend to do other things. Unless yeah. I'm really invested in the match or the story, and this is one that kept my attention. Yeah, I was I was playing a game and watching wrestling at the same time, and literally a minute in, I was all like, <laughs> and then I rewound it, and then you realize the back like, of it are again, they fighting? Are they... back to the entrance, and I just put my phone down, and I was all like, when does he get? Like the whole fucking time, like because I was like, oh, he got hit, and he's like, oh, he's a little bloody, and then I was like, what? What the fuck? What the fuck? I watched the first two and a half minutes twice because I went just went all the way back. I was like, when was the moment? And there was like the whole time it's like all of it, all of it was the moment. It's good, yeah, good stuff, Maynard. Yeah. Um. Oh, the Cracker Barrel Classic. Yeah. God, this was such a downer. Which the, one was this? The oh. KFC match. Oh yeah, <laughs> someone tweeted like, imagine winning. Imagine winning like really good seats to or like front row seats to a WWE event, and then you find out you have to eat Kentucky Fried Chicken in front of everybody. Aggressively, aggressively. Like your life. That guy, to... that guy in the middle is like, yeah, like just totally selling it. I'm like, all right, man. He's, yeah, we get it. They have a gun to the head of your family. Yeah, yeah. like <laughs> seriously, dude. No, I would have keistered to chicken bone. Oh, oh come on. What? Robinson said we're class acts. We're definitely not. You would have keistered it. Did you say class act? Yeah. I mean, I would have at least, I would have saved the potatoes. I would have made a play for the potatoes. You said we're total class acts. Before they, like, destroyed the table. I would have been like, no, nah, you're not taking this, man. Yeah, I would have, like, them did. I would have gotten, I would have gotten myself over. None of them did. Taken. One of the dudes took the, the chicken. Pot pie. Because that's the only thing I ever Did they even have the pot pie out there? They didn't have like, a pot pie, man. God damn it. Oh, wait, is that the pot pie? The, the, or is that potato? Are you about to play? Right there. That's little... potato. Potatoes. It's potatoes. I'm saving the potatoes. That's potatoes. I would have grabbed the potatoes. You're not fucking walking away with those potatoes. Hey, dude. I mean, I will give them this over AEW. They put them through the table right the first fucking time. They didn't use the full. There's well, that. There's that. That's fine. they did. Not everyone. Not did. everyone that night. And then fucking, they didn't at least throw biscuits at each other like it was an actual like weapon. What a fucking like. Hey guys, it, can you make it any more obvious that you have a partnership with KFC? That you have you have this advertising bit with them. So there's a lot. This was a straight up low light for my whole weekend. The biggest, this was, the yeah, biggest, this was the biggest part so actually corny. wasn't the bullshit 
and crazy not promo right there. crap barrel AEW bullshit kind of thing it was. It was we're not gonna announce that our tag team champions are gonna have a tag team title match until then. Because I was thinking like, well, I could see it being a surprise, but then I'm like, no, fuck that. Pay per views aren't surprises. Pay per views are we're doing matches. You do weird surprises. They had an like, open match. They had an open challenge going into it. I just she, didn't. Yeah, that's how it was billed as an open challenge. Yeah, I, I didn't like that. I didn't like the. I mean, all the fucking KFC shit. That's what it's come to. down to with the Viking Raiders because they don't know how to properly put them in a story. Like well, we don't have we don't have to write you guys in a story. So I don't just be badasses. I don't, and I don't think like either they haven't been able to. What we're not seeing them work well with other tag teams. They're not meshing. I don't know where the lapse is. Whether it's booking, whether it's making the matches, it's other people. They're not working with other tags. I know they had a match of the OC that looked okay. After you but, know what they're but, missing, hmm. the Ascension. <laughs> yeah. Someone You'd probably be good with the. No one would be a good tag team. Where are those uh, New World Order reptilian guys? We fired. Him. Fuck. Yeah. Damn it. Uh, speaking of the Ascension, I guess they are. They announced their first booking since. Oh yeah. And right. I don't. I guess they're still going by the Ascension. I don't know. Currently, oh, they're yeah. still billed as the Ascension, but then I think they're going by the Wasteland. Something oh. weird. Wasteland makes more sense. I was gonna say Descension. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. So. Um, I hope they do well. I yeah. do too. I don't hate them. I love their their theme was my favorite theme. Their like, entrance in NXT was sick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just that like. Yeah, yeah that was dope. Yeah. Anyway, I need the other one. This one's harsh, but yeah. it's fire. So it's fire. Um, I thought that even I was surprised at how much Viking Raiders versus OC was not great. Like I thought the match itself would have been really good, but it wasn't really good. It was just an okay match. Um, here you go, put that back. I did. I do like how OC talk when they come out of the ring, though. Oh yeah, I just like this that. trash talking that they do is so entertaining. Oh, they're great. They're absolutely great. <laughs> but like you said, I don't feel like they clicked in, in quite the way that I was expecting them to. It was a good match. It wasn't incredible. Um, and then there was all the KFC shit, which was really fucking distracting. Uh, and then when they went to go through it, fucking Vic Joseph was like, "Everyone, grab your twenty dollars." You want you want me to like want chicken? Then advertise with Popeyes because I'd rather get Popeyes chicken than KFC. They've done better KFC shit. When Dolph Ziggler came out as a colonel and wrestled, they the did chicken. that every week for a while. Yeah, like it, was de- it, was it was great. good though. Yeah, because it Shawn wasn't... Michaels came out as the colonel. Shit, they've, been doing Dolph this every, they've been doing this for a couple of years now. With yeah, KFC, huh? and now as soon as I saw the this... table, I was like, man, I was really hoping someone would come out dressed as him. I yeah, but no, it was it. This sucked. It Can was... you imagine a Braun Strowman colonel? I think they even had <laughs> Becky Lynch dressed up as Colonel for a commercial. That's funny. Yeah, I think that's right. So, like, oh, it makes God. sense, but then the way they did it was so fucking shitty. Before she's the man, though, mind you. She was not the man when she was the Colonel. Steampunk Colonel. Huh. Yeah, she was um, still Steampunk Colonel. Steampunk Colonel. <laughs> got King Corbin versus Roman Reigns. Tables, ladders, and chairs match. Oh, my. Oh, this is one that ended in the whole fucking everybody was out there beating the shit out of Roman. I was really surprised that they didn't give Roman the win on this one. I think it still made him look like it's it's oh, yeah. doing what they need to do, which is look at look at Corbin, how much of an asshole he has all these people helping him out to get the win, and, and then Roman barely Reigns gets barely gets it. Yeah. But also I thought find anything for a locker room leader, more and more I'm thinking, why is nobody coming out and helping yeah, him? Yeah, who the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> the crowd even started chanting Usos during yeah. this one. Yeah. Oh, that was that sad. Made me so sad. Oh, sorry. That would have been great. That would have been that would have been yes. amazing. I yeah. Had so much hope for a second. Yeah, yeah. I was really excited. Would have been nice, but nope, they in trouble. The match wasn't bad. It just was, like I said, I think more more surprised that they're going to keep going the way they're going with it. Um, I'm not, I don't have a big problem with it. I think that Roman and Baron work incredible together. Roman's finally getting the cheers that they always wanted him to get. Yep. Baron couldn't be hated more, yep. and he's going to figure out a way to get hated more. Yeah, Vince is like, holy shit. Holy shit, this is actually working. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> Roman's actually getting cheers. He's like, I've been right all along. <laughs> and then you just hear, it was the dog food. We gotta get more dog No, Vince. More <laughs> dog We need a dog food match, damn We it. need an ASPCA sponsorship. When Roman Reigns comes out, play Arms of the Angels. No. We need a Petco sponsorship. Oh, <coughs> uh, yeah. Oh, that hurt to do. Voice. Yo, Bray Wyatt versus The Miz. Oh, okay, so this... Holy shit. Bray Wyatt is by far, like, the best actor on the roster right now. He's yeah. in fucking incredible, man. The whole entrance, he comes out all skipping. 
happy, like, oh my god! He's like, and then the fucking, like, the poses for the audience. He did a selfie with it, dude. He did a selfie with somebody, yeah. <laughs> oh my god. And then, like, he starts going, he's like, ah! Ah! Yeah. <laughs> he fucking goes for it again. So fucking Miz funny. ruined it. Even the entrance, because I was thinking, like, if, the, if you're this, like, your family's been affected kind of fucker, I'm expecting you to run out and start fighting him. Well, he does rush him at some point, but... When the bell rings, he does it, like, he lets him do the whole thing. It's like, do something. Well, yeah, because isn't the thing, he's a good guy, he's so he's going to wait for the, he's yeah. got to wait for the bell? Yeah. Oh, he gets on the table, and he just holds so up the bell So what do you think, I think they use Velcro now, what do you think about that? Oh, yeah. They've been, they've been using Velcro yeah. ever since uh, WrestleMania. When oh. you not said, WrestleMania. Yeah, ever since WrestleMania, they've been using Velcro on all the belts. Okay. When you said that, I, I, I cannot not see it now, I'm like... Yeah, it's yeah. been Velcro ever since. <laughs> ever since Seth won the title off Brock, it's been Velcro. Oh, okay. And then they did all the other belts Velcro right after. Uh, people were flipping out about it, and all I thought was how funny, because if you guys knew where Velcro came from, you'd have to really shut your mouth quick, but it came from Macho Man Randy Savage. Mm -hmm. He couldn't get the belt off fast enough where he was doing all his crazy shit, so he had them remove the buttons on the back and put Velcro on so he could just and then whip it back on and keep going and being fucking nuts. And so every if you look at old old pictures of Macho with the title, it's fucking Velcro. There's when none you, of these. When you said that, I was thinking like I thought it came from NASA. <laughs> like oh. I think like came yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. I was like I, Randy Savage invented Velcro? That yeah. should that be a great Twitter account is like wrestler inventions just create like false histories for it. Oh yeah. That would cool. actually be kinda cool. Yeah. Um, I thought the whole match was incredible. And Bray's, like you said, the most incredible actor. Even when he wins, he looks so sad. Yeah. Just, I'm, like, and he's even like, when he knocks them is out outside and he comes in at nine and he's all like, don't, like, don't do this. Like, it's so good. I love, also, I, so it made me think that maybe Bray's character and the best part of this is that the Bray character is absolutely out of control. Like, I really got the, the impression he's absolutely out of control. He has no control over himself. So. Yeah. I know I've been reading a lot of things. People are like, what was the whole thing with the fiend staring down? What does that mean? Like, what is that? I'm like, I could see that affecting him because he doesn't have control of it. So even, in a sense, showing it immediately changes him because he's like, he doesn't, he isn't it. Or he is, but he isn't aware of it. Like, he's, he says it's, he's, he's really playing the idea of, I'm, I have no control over this. The bus he is even rolling. talked to it. Yeah, yeah, he was talking to Miss. He was like, you know, he's telling to like, Basically, he was trying to talk to Miz and not fight him. And Miz is the one that attacked him. I'm talking about in the match, right? In the match. No, we're talking about the Fiend when they showed the footage. Well, I know that, but I'm, I'm saying like as He's far as... Coming. Yeah, as far as like the character work and stuff like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bray was totally like playing off as like trying to be like as, that he was innocent, that he... When you put him in that like break the arm thing and he's like, do it! Yeah, and then... Fucking. But that's the, like the range of emotions that he showed during the match, like from being cheerful and like innocent to psychotic and to like angry like when he would be uh, covering himself up and then he choked and is out like right right away yeah no. it was just interesting and he fucking like stuff. slammed his shoulder in the thing like yeah. popping it back oh into yeah that, that was so, that was cool too cool. and they're like the first hit he's even gotten offensively was against himself yeah I was like fuck i man i really hope however this goes when when somebody beats Bray. They maintain him strong. Like, he needs this to be, like, he needs to be the new Undertaker. This needs to be, like, we can't lose this, like, where he gets super weak, you know? Yeah. Because no. this is amazing. This is absolutely incredible. Yeah. Um, but then when the Fiend showed up, he talked to the Fiend up there. He goes, okay, I'll do it. Okay. Yeah. He's like, I'll get it right now. And then he went and got the fucking mallet and shit. And that's when it happened. That's when... Daniel Bryan came back. Oh shit! Oh shit! He looks so goddamn younger without hair. Yeah. yeah. He I was just like, fuck. You know what I didn't like about it? Was what? it was just a normal haircut. Oh well, yeah. yeah. No, it's I was callback. really hoping that it was a callback to a normal haircut. No. Red Dragon or the American Dragon. Yeah, when he had a normal fucking haircut. I'm saying he just had the fiend rip his hair out. I wanted oh, him to yeah. put bald spots in it. Uh, so it's like he cut it down, but it was still had bald spots. I thought it was going to be And then let choppy. it grow back in. Yeah. You know, make like, it look a little shitty. Yeah, choppy okay. haircut. Yeah, make it choppier or make it like if you've shaved it down, but then have a couple spots that were just shaved all the way to your scalp. Brie Bella wouldn't allow that. Fuck Brie Bella. She wouldn't let that happen. Because um, then it would be all like, yeah, he was ripping my hair out, and then I had to cut it this short. Yeah. But I'm not shaving my head it's bald. It's like you all getting bubblegum stuck in your hair. And yeah. You yeah. got to rip part of it out. Exactly. I wanted the bubblegum look, man. Yeah. He used like some like 
vegan organic shaving cream, you could get the same effect. It really. I do good. feel like that Daniel Bryan is the only guy who seems to be over enough to get a win that the crowd will be okay with over the Fiend. Yeah, absolutely. I don't think anyone else is anywhere near getting a win over the Fiend. I don't think it's going to happen now, though. I don't think it's going to happen at the Rumble either. I think it's too soon if it does. I think this is something that they're building up for Mania. Uh, let me again. Yeah. But the the challenge is, and I don't know how, because I honestly don't know how it could be pulled off by WWE with how they booked Bray as Bray Pryor. How will Brian go over where, yeah, Brian looked great. It'll be amazing. But The Fiend on Monday will still look scary and still have an effect. Because that's the thing is, yeah, he... This is such a cool character. It, I, I want to see it become something that lasts long after. Like, yeah, he loses, but yeah. I don't think The Fiend shows up that Monday, I think, is the thing. I think The Fiend doesn't show up for two more months. And the then Fiend disappears and comes back and fucks somebody else up. Yeah, just like The Undertaker. He would die and come back later. Yeah. yeah. He would lose a match, and then you just wouldn't see him for a while. And I then think... when he came back, everyone would be like, holy shit, it's The Undertaker. This is going to be shitty crazy. That's all you do. Needs, I think he needs to win at WrestleMania. Win or lose, I think that if he loses, it's it's it takes no skin off your back to put him off TV for two, three months and have him come back and everyone forgets about the loss. They're more excited to see him and the carnage they remember he brings. When did it, yeah, because when did the vignettes start? When did everything start about SummerSlam? Yeah. SummerSlam was his first match. So it was like eight weeks before then because it was yeah. like eight episodes in. Um, yeah. I think I think win or lose on it is fine, but I, I mean I think that if Daniel Bryan gets the win at Mania, then yeah, you just have Bray disappear for a while. <laughs> I think Fiend should kill Undertaker though. Yes. Um, Bobby Lashley versus Rusev did not like that match as much as I thought I would. Table botch at the end. Table botch didn't give a shit about. Which is table botch though? Which yeah, is so weird given that he. Bobby jumped over a table, looked great too. It's like yeah, and they're like six hundred pounds together. So how that table didn't break was yeah. Ridiculous. What the fuck? Yeah, those are like two of the heaviest dudes in the world, and they just bounce off that table. It's like what the fuck was that? I can't wait to see that on Botch Mania. I am the table. Where did you Where did you guys get NJPW tables? Yeah, no shit. Yeah. <laughs> no, you guys are known for having the tables that break. This oh, is so you guys got those Japanese tables, huh? <laughs> those always look so fuck. I, I'm always like, oh good god, because they never break. They always look so bad to take a bit hit on. Speaking of Japanese. Yeah. Next match, dude. Kabuki Warriors versus... Oh, Jesus. Whoa. I was... I, I wanted to make wow. it awkward. I wanted to make it awkward. Wow. All right. Well. Segway's there, guys. Um, You're welcome. Kabuki Warrior versus Becky Lynch <laughs> and Charlotte Flair. What did you guys think of the match overall? I mean, it's kind of a train wreck. <laughs> so what? Marsh needs to wrap like, this up pretty soon. No, I was just fixing my sweater. Okay, oh, yeah. Oh, did just you adjusting just? Yeah, my did. sweater. Oh my god. It's like one of those leather seats. This is like smell o vision. Gonna... Oh. It's just like a leather seat thing with oh, a sweater. God. Okay, oh. so I'm breathing primarily with my mouth right now. <laughs> it's like talking really fast with like your chin. I'm like, yeah. So, this is what I think it is. so guys, I think that. <laughs> Um, honestly, I think the match was still pretty good, all things considering. Um, and I think that's due in part of Becky and Asuka communicating. I think it has mostly to do with Becky and Asuka communicating. Because uh, I felt like the refs weren't jumping in where I felt like they should. I kept being like, why aren't they checking on Kari right now? Like, mm -hmm. And you see Becky wave over a ref a couple of times. And then the guy goes back over towards the commentators. And it's like, she's over there dying. Dude. Like, um, and I, I still haven't been able to pinpoint when the time, when it happened, or what spot it was. Um, reports say it was like within the first couple minutes of the match. Like it happened quick. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she just kind of slowly degraded throughout the match. Yeah, and it got That's bad. That's scary, man. Yeah. And the, the thing that made me notice is when she jumped off the off of the top, or not the top, but I think just the ring apron even, onto uh, Becky and Charlotte. And they didn't have a good camera shot of her hitting the table, mm -hmm. but you just heard a bunch of really fucking weird noises, and Charlotte just wasn't there. And the commentators were both were just like, "Oh, well, Charlotte definitely got out of the way. Mm -hmm. Kari didn't get all of it, but maybe she got enough." But she got Becky. Yeah, she got Becky there, sorta. And then you just see her like on the ground, and Becky like rolls over on the table, like, "Are you dead? Are you dead? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Are you dead? Oh uh, shit." 
And then every moment after that was, I think, scary. Oh my God, yeah. Before. Watching that match, knowing that Kyrie got hurt, it was just like, oh, oh my God, oh my God, don't do that. Yeah. Oh yeah, and then when Charlotte just fucking beats her up and throws her as hard as she can through that table. That was so hard because she was just tapping no, no, no. And I was just like, We were oh, watching my. live. We weren't even in the match. And we're like, don't, she's yeah. hurt. Before like, before they even announced anything, we were like, she's not good. Her. Yeah. We're back. And then when she was doing it, I was like, she's fighting it because she can't take it. Yeah. Like, stop, put her down. Like, what the fuck? And then when the spear happened and she oh. went down all fucking weird, I was like, oh, that's bad. I was like, she's in bad shape. And then Charlie just gets mad and throws her. And it's like, fuck you, dude. Like, oh. how much... Which, you're supposed to be this fucking ring general type. You're supposed to be this fucking vet showing everybody how things are done. And you can't tell when someone's clearly fucking cross-eyed. Yeah, and it was after the fact, because I think after the power bomb, then I think both parties kind of like went to each other. Asuka went to Kyrie. Yeah. Charlotte went to Becky. And, that's and I think got. that's when the exchange happened between Charlotte and Becky. Like, do you just fuck? She's concussed. You just power bombed her. Yeah, you just fucking. <laughs> <just destroyed her. laughs> Good job. Yeah. How'd I do? Um, I. I wouldn't have. <laughs> she's yeah. she's thinking she's baking yeah. cookies right now. Yeah. That was cool, right? Well, <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I mean, I don't mean to come down so hard on Charlotte. I don't. Um, it just from the outside watching it, it was so clear it's that it's more the refs because the refs should have been the one communicating to all, everybody. The refs should have been more involved. They should have been getting between. They should have been there after that first spear to yeah. stop Charlotte. Yeah. yeah. They should have literally protected Kari and just told Charlotte, go do something else. Yeah. Of all the times to do the X, do the X. Like, and the I producer mean, here, the first thing for the TLC that I noticed was, why are there so many refs? That was my first question. Right? Yeah, and I told her because of all the stuff that happens outside yeah. and stuff. I mean, the whole thing I thought was... And I, I remember like watching the match too, like two refs were following Kyrie around. Mm -hmm. Like they were just watching her, and then they'd like go back and look at each other. Like, I almost feel like they tr they tr they asked her. They tried to like mm -hmm. make a minimal effort to see if she was okay, and she like said no because that fighting spirit. You know, she's not gonna. Yeah. I don't want to be an asshole, but if she doesn't if she doesn't respond in English, I don't know what she's saying. That's probably a bad thing because I know she speaks English. Just go with it. Maybe she's in character. <laughs> yeah, right? Like, I mean, you'll almost wonder if that's what was happening. If she just was not talking to them in English and like, I don't know how to yeah. get anything out of her. Which actually, it could have been. It could. You can happen. get you can get fucked up where you cannot. You, you there's a lot of things. If that she got jarred fun. enough, it would not be a shock to me to hear that she was having a hard time speaking an additional language. Yeah. I just assumed, producer, that they had some sort of uh, there's some sort of like nonverbal thing you do. Yeah, they do the hand squeeze, but I never saw them get close enough to that to doing the hand. You've seen that, yeah. Yeah. No, I, it's in. It, it, I've tried to put that into HIW. The guys don't want it. Yeah, they don't want to be touching hands, dude. They don't want to be touching hands. Queer. <laughs> yeah. Everybody queer? Oh, no, man. I'm wrestling in here. He punched him when I he punched me when I tried to grab his hand. I think he's good. Yeah. <laughs> you just put your hand and they, they just instinctually. He's good. He's we good. Can, hold on. Do we kiss now? Yeah. Okay, we're good. Yeah, he's good. The ending was uh, very sloppy. It was it was rushed and put together. I feel like that Becky did everything she could to save Kari in every way. There's even footage of towards the end of the match after they get right before Becky runs to the ladder, literally rolling Kari saying underneath the ring. Yeah. So she's beneath the apron. You see her like she rolls her underneath and then she gets up to go do her her spot. Yeah. It's like the you, last you wait here. <laughs> the last thing she did was like stay in here so no one can hurt you. You know what I mean? Because, like, if, I don't know if Charlotte was just not listening or what, or if she was just afraid of her trying to do but something then, more. But, 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 the, but I feel like Kyrie, like, refused to leave the match. Like, I, Which I, might have also been, like, part of it is, like, if somebody's, like, there's a story of Brock and Kurt in the WrestleMania 19 match. Oh. They both got fucked up. Yeah. And after the match, mm -hmm. they both were, like, combative with everyone because they were still in it in their heads. Wow. If you can get someone out of it, like... Some way, like, hey, you're in darkness. Take this as a signal, or I don't know. Charlotte will. I'll let Charlotte pull you out from under this and use you as a weapon. <laughs> yeah, I, I just. But she was also running away, like yeah. so. She when when yeah. when when Oscar goes to get her, she's like crying, and Oscar's like, "Trust me, we just gotta do this one thing, mm -hmm. and then you're she's... out, you're done." Oh. They go in there. She's like, "Just watch, just watch." So as soon as Becky and Charlotte come up to the ring, oh that yeah, that's spot, right. Kyrie gets Corey the just fuck runs out. away and gets the runs. Fuck out of yeah, the yeah, because Charlotte's coming at her and she literally just runs off and then runs towards Becky and then lays down in front of Becky so Becky can do a nice soft little yeah. thing. 
So it almost felt to me like she was afraid to be near Charlotte, like Charlotte yeah. was being too rough or something. Yeah. And I don't know if that's what it was or not, but that's what it looked like. Um, and it was and kind of fucking scary. Wasn't this Kari Sane's first, like, big pay-per-view? Yeah, well, her, so, her, her main event for so, WWE. Yeah. I mean, with that in mind, you can understand why, like, she's in her mind probably like, oh, my God, I have to, you know, make this the biggest thing because this is my first thing. So yeah. much is probably going through that person's head. I mean, oh, yeah. I'm guessing. Oh, yeah. oh absolutely. I don't, and I'm not, I'm not criticizing her. I'm not criticizing anybody for it um, because that's the nature of the business, man. People are going to work through their injuries. Fucking Triple H worked through a crushed throat, you know? Yeah, that's pretty cool. So, yeah. uh, I mean, we just watched the untold story of uh, Sting's last stand, and he talks about that, and he goes, I don't know, man. He's like, it's part of just who, who we are in this business. We're crazy. Yeah. yeah. And then Michael Hayes, they showed him, and he was like, it was the, the he said he grew up in the territories. Mm-hmm. And he goes, and... You you showed up to your town, you finished your match, and you gave the people what, what they paid for. Something like that. And he goes, and you just did it again. Mm-hmm. And he goes, you showed up, and you finished your match. And that was it. And he's like, that was just the mentality of, of those days. Just to do your job. Yeah. Do, your, yeah. do your job. And you do, yeah, and you do your yeah. fucking job. That's what he said. Mm-hmm. Reminds they even me, beeped him, yeah. I mean, it reminds me of the military. It's just like, yeah. you know. That's what it was. You make the town, you finish your match, and you do your fucking job. That's how he said it. And he's like, that was just it. That's how that's the mentality. Yeah. And I think they still carry that with him in a lot of ways. Mm-hmm. You don't get into this if you're not that crazy. I, I think I think well, we can do better in the, Oh yeah. I, I do think it was really cool that Becky tweeted out today about Kari Sane. Mm-hmm. They both did. Charlotte also. Oh yeah. I didn't see yeah. Charlotte. Charlotte responded to Becky's tweet. So I don't know if they should respond because I thought I saw a, <laughs> like an actual tweet that's like you are a badass or Kyrie saying you are a badass something like that. I'm kind of in the same in the same way that mm-hmm. Becky tweeted out. Yeah, <laughs> that's neither here or there. Uh, I didn't like that it ended with that fucking schmaz with the Baron oh, Corbin yeah. and Roman still like, fighting. They kind of they insinuated it was going on for over yeah. half an hour. Yeah, I'm like bullshit. They're fighting in the back for that long. Yeah, dude. shut the fuck. They're up. all winded, gas. They're all like probably napping next to each other. Being yeah. so tired. Each other's hands. Yeah, exactly. Like sucking mm. on their own thumbs. Oh yeah, <laughs> it was ridiculous. I was like, shut the fuck up. Jesus, that was annoying. Um, so, but yeah, but then finishing off with them, everyone just like fighting. I guess it was a good way to take away from Oscar and Kyrie looking really awkward winning. But yeah, but I mean, I don't think that was the idea going into it. I think that's how they're going to finish it either yeah. way, which is frustrating. Yeah, I wish they trusted that match enough to close it out. Um, but I mean, shit happened during the match, and maybe that was a little bit of a relief. But um, I think takes us too raw. Yeah, I mean, I think it was otherwise cool. Yeah. I mean, the stuff in there. Um, and I think that if Kari didn't get hurt, that would have been like, an amazing. Probably would have been yeah. match of the night. It would have been the fucking match for sure. Um, but then there was so much going on outside of that, and it happened so early. Yeah. And I think what's weird about it too is that everyone became a different type of spectator at that point. Mm-hmm. Everyone was watching what everyone's doing and. It was just a little weird that it happened for so long because usually like you catch a little snippet of this and this was all like, and here's when Becky does this and here's when Becky goes over here and this is when this happens and then she falls over here and now Becky's over there and it's like most of the match was like watching the strategy of getting through a damaged person during yeah, the match. Yeah, that's, that's how I watched it. Like, yeah. How they're working around Kyrie Sane and yeah. when did she get injured? That's what I was keeping that yeah, for. Yeah, I kind of want to watch it again but you know, for sure. Yeah. Um, does bring us to Raw unless there's anything you're missing from the thing. No, I thought it was a okay pay per view. I mean, yeah. I did like the, I did not like that ending. I felt bad for the the women involved. I thought that the fight, in my view, was an attempt to kind of cover it, which I, I don't know. I just didn't like that ending. I, I, I hated the KFC thing. Yeah. Didn't they have? Didn't they include um, Street Profits in that brawl too? Because, yeah. or was that yesterday? I think that, that was yesterday. yesterday. That was yesterday that. where they had the backstage segment and then they yeah. just, okay. Yeah, that mind. was, that was, that's it. Because then they're like doing their dumb shit and they go, ooh, and there's the fucking Oh, out. yeah, because it was right after the uh, Lana Bobby. Okay, let's talk about yeah. Monday. Yeah, Monday. Let's talk about Raw. <laughs> I really like Seth Rollins and AOP together. Yeah, he's doing great heel work. His promos are pretty solid. His <laughs> promos are so good right now. So, I still don't like him, but that's good. Like, I don't like, I don't like Seth Rollins. Well, let's circle back real quick. Fabtina <laughs> says... Uh, people, there are people who say that women shouldn't even be in TLC. They can't handle those types of matches. No. Um, no. I disagree. I feel like if you watch Evolution last year, there's no argument anymore. Like, 
incredible match by women. Why, why the wouldn't match. they? Yeah, why wouldn't they belong in in a match like that? I think that we try and like put some put people on the pedestal for the safety women in this case, and no, they're fine. I think if you're in this, you got to do everything there, and. If we're going to say that one one person based on their gender shouldn't be in this type of match because of the danger, then probably we shouldn't put the men in it either. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. there is, there is an inherent level of danger that you are signing up for. Yeah. Plus this. Going hey, to this industry. Did, did you ever see the Candice LeRae Young Bucks match where she got kicked in the face of the, like... Yeah. She got kicked in the oh, face of the yeah. uh, tennis shoe covered in thumbtacks? Oh. Yeah. Her nose yeah. was... Her face was she destroyed. She was fucked. <laughs> Yes. And she still looks cute now. Yeah. <laughs> just, yeah. Like she's yeah. all fine now. Yeah. But, but yeah, she looked. I mean, that's like her picture with Joey Ryan, right? Isn't that? Yeah, the yeah. the world's cutest tag team. Yeah. Picture. It's one of my favorite shirts too. Yeah. Is she looks fucked, and it's just a picture of them holding like e each other up, and this is world's cutest tag team. She's just blood pouring down. Joey her Ryan, like, like Joey Ryan, but yeah. she's all. TP poker. <laughs> TP poker. <laughs> Welcome back, TP poker. It's been a while. It's been a minute. Um, yeah, I think the women uh, are fantastic, and I think that they have a lot of the more compelling storylines nowadays. Yep. Um, except for Lana. Less Lana is fine. Oh, well, yeah. Except when the writers want to do. Minus yeah. Lana. Minus Lana. He released um, four so, people, and then Lana wasn't one of them. Yeah. <laughs> so that does bring us back over to Seth Rollins and AOP. Uh, I think they're doing killer. I think they're an awesome team. I even like the later on, him coming back and doing the shit he did. Um, I think this is a good, interesting Seth. Yeah, I, mean, I, I agree. This is renewing my interest in Seth, um, but it's doing it in a way where it's not he's not getting over with me. Yeah, because I still dislike him as a character, and I'm still not rooting for him. So I think that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, I think it's a good spot to be. Yeah, um, yeah I think that I think he's doing, and I think his promo work is incredible right now. Um, everything that we said about his promos last year are just not ringing true these past two weeks, and well, that's great. I think they, I don't know what the difference is in when you script a promo for a heel versus a face, but his promos are authentic. His promos feel better. I almost want part of me, part of me wants this to be like, well, his shitty promos are him just getting ready to be this and like not able to handle it himself. When he'd come out there, he was phony in because he really just wanted to be, you know, what he is now. So when he'd come out Maybe. there and say, we're here in the old Pueblo. Yeah, we made it to Arizona. <laughs> yeah. Um, Tucson is a city. Wave, wave, wave. Um, I mean, CM Punk said on backstage that, you know, it's easier to be a heel in general because it's really hard to go out and have an audience uh, listen to you and believe you and say that I'm a good guy and I'm cool. That's a much harder thing to do than just saying, fuck you guys. <laughs> yeah. Like and then let I don't like this city. Fuck yeah, you guys. I don't like this place. Fuck you. Um, <laughs> Plus, some of the, like, I mean, the best stories, the, the, the legendary Chris Jericho just going out there, fuck Mike Ditka, fuck the Bulls, fuck the Blackhawks. It's so good. I love, like, it, being a heel is, from what I've heard, like, the best. It's like, yeah. you just, and, and, I mean, it is a talent, for sure, but it's the best. You get to just be the worst person. Yeah, and <laughs> it's supposedly a lot of fun. Um, but it is supposedly a lot easier, and I could definitely see that too. It's definitely easier to go out there and say "fuck you guys" and everything you like than it is to say "hey guys, I made it." Woo! Please root for me. Yeah, I'm Shorty G. You like me? No, yeah. never. Dying a fire. <laughs> a small fire. Yeah, I hate that shit. Um, then that Viking Raiders versus uh, the Club, which I was positive they mentioned was a rematch for the titles, and then it wasn't when it ended. <laughs> All of a sudden, once they won, it was like, they're not champions. Yeah. Um, it was an okay match, though. Not bad, but it didn't, like, grasp me again like I thought I would. Oh, it's, for me, it was like, again? Yeah. yeah. Like, the, it was... You know what's weird, though, is we saw them here live, and the, the those two teams, when I think about it, they had a match, and it was incredible. I don't know why what's not clicking with them once the TV's on. Do you think it's they're not. holding it back for like to have this amazing blow off pay per view thing? Probably not. You mean like they should have had? That's giving them too yeah. much credit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, um, man. I don't know. Eric I didn't like Rowling. any of the Rowan stuff. I thought mm -hmm. that was throwaway. Oh uh, yeah, he he's just getting the jobber of the week now, huh? That's the kind of treatment he's getting. To oh, push that comes later. To push that stupid fucking basket of whatever the fuck it is, and no one cares, and no one knows, and they don't even have an idea. I don't think. 
I think just whatever's in that fucking little basket of shit, I don't give a shit, man. It's another puppet creature. I wish, but it's not. It's just nothing. Swoggle. It's yeah. another puppet Swoggle. pal. Um, Lashley and Lana was fucking stomach turning. There's a second there when Lana was ordering Lashley. I was like, please, Lashley, turn. Oh. Her. Yeah, and then... Oh, you bitch. <laughs> I don't like oh. people telling me what to do, but I love it when you do it. Or so he says something like yeah. that. You cuck. You yeah. cuck. <laughs> I didn't like a single second of any of it, man. Yeah. I'm convinced that she's tone deaf. I really am. Yeah. Yeah. Her, her, her voice just really, really irks me. It, I, don't, wh- I, I don't know. Well, the thing that always bugs me, and I know she doesn't have an accent now, but when she switches between it, and it's the worst, like, okay, stop. Yeah. yeah, don't do this horrible. shit. <laughs> she's a horrible actor in every way. Um, she thinks that if she just if she's doing bad, she can just get louder and then she's better. And you're like, no. It doesn't happen. When, I mean, when you're tone deaf too, you, even your yells are just so off. Yeah, so off. They are. They're off and they're like on some weird pitch and they're not emotional and you sound like you're faking and it's shitty. Um, we got the Gauntlet match after that. That was pretty cool. A um, lot of uh, ricochet in there. A lot of Tozawa, which was nice. Um, yeah, Tozawa got the first pinfall, right? And then it was Tozawa and Ricochet. We were shocked he didn't yeah, die last Tozawa week. Yeah, Tozawa got it on uh, our truth Yeah, I thought he was dead last week from that kick from Aleister Black. The way he's fucking Not, was it, just like... Just drag him out by the... Was place. Aleister Black or was it Drew McIntyre? It was Aleister Black. Oh, okay. Yeah. It was one oh, that's together. right, yeah. Yeah, McIntyre was... Oh, that's before. right, he took two of those matches back-to-back. It would have been great, yeah. like, if... Our truth came out dragging Tazawa by the leg. <laughs> like, Get up! <laughs> we gotta work. Wake well, yeah, up, it's time. Uh, Matt Hardy was cool in there. It was fun watching him. Oh, we totally popped. His music came on. Yeah. Woo! We were... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw tweets like, how does Matt Hardy's, like, how does a Hardy voice theme still slap after 25 years? Yeah, it never gets old. There's some, like, that and, um, what is it, Edge and Christian and the, the Brood's old theme? Oh, Brood's that, theme The Brood's dope. theme's still the best, yeah. like, just oh. still pretty good. <laughs> no, it's because Jim Johnson's a badass, man. Yeah. Um, let's see, Umberto comes out, beats Ricochet barely, and then uh, Andrade just beats the shit out of him and murders him to death. Yeah. yeah. Which is yeah. a little weird. Yeah. A little weird. Zelina was out there being a little weird. Uh, about all that, um, and Jerry Lawler for whatever reason is still trying to push that they're a couple. Jerry, yeah, I, Jerry. There was a couple of moments. Uh, they had another moment where like Jerry said something, or and Vic was like, yeah, he's like trying to correct Jerry when he's like, just forget it. It's done. Yeah, you can't go back now. I really like Seth Rollins with Rey Mysterio. I like that whole business. Um, really puts over Mysterio as a face on that one, and Seth Rollins as a heel with a fucking pipe. Yeah, um, how is, how are they going to, so is it going to be like Rey Mysterio and Kevin Owens versus AOP then? Is that going to be like the first? Oh, how are they going to go back and forth for a while? Yeah, because like, Um, because the feud is really like Seth Owens and Kevin, or Seth Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens. So like, how are you throwing Rey Mysterio in there? And like, I think it's just in the middle. I think he's going to do a Rey but, Mysterio. But thing. also, didn't Rey Mysterio come out and help Humberto when he was getting his ass beat by Andrade? Yeah, and that's when Seth came out. Yeah. Because he goes, there we go, now I can beat him with a pipe. Yeah. Also, did you just say it like, made uh, Rey look like a face? I don't know how you can't make Rey look like a face. Well, no, 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 no. I think it establishes him. Just Wait. establishes the story straight off. This okay, is, yeah. This is where yeah. we're going with it. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I just don't know like where it's going. Like where are they splitting it up? Because right now it's like you have the Rey Mysterio and like the Andrade and Humberto Carrillo kind of thing that could eventually take fruition. But then you're also throwing him in the main event scene with Seth Rollins and Kevin Owens in their feud. Yeah, I, I feel like the one part of this I don't like with Rey in it, and I love Rey, just it feels like he's lost so much like, he looks super weak in this run. Like, he's, and it's, they haven't really invested time to, like, build him up. Yeah, he's got a belt, but, like. Oh, and they're, apparently they are going to be releasing a new United States belt. Really? No way, dude. That's yeah. a classic. 
Yep, they're they're also changing that one, like the Impact I'm Noodle. okay with it because right. that's always been my like. I thought the ugliest belt. Really? Yeah, I've never liked the US belt. I I liked it more than the spinner belt. The spinner US belt that yeah. was frightening. But yeah, I never liked that with a circle plate on the middle. And yeah, John John yeah. Cena. The, Dun, 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 dun. Wah, 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 wah. Um, let's see, Deanna Perrazzo, I thought, had... Made a debut. Uh, she made a debut, and I was really excited, and then I felt like they didn't use her very well. Well, they, she made her debut, but she's also going up against Asuka. Yeah, but she got, like, two moves in, offense-wise, and they were, like, her finishers, and they didn't, like, do anything to Asuka, so it kind of just... I wish she just didn't use those moves. If yeah. you're only going to do some moves, don't do your big finishers. Yeah. And just kind of like establish that they're not strong enough. Yeah, yeah. They're, not we, ready, they're not ready for Asuka. Yeah. But we love seeing her and her look and her music. Yeah, her, mu her music, the virtuoso stuff, the look, all that was really cool. So I thought she had everything going for her. Just like, well, don't burn your fucking finish already. Yeah. yeah. You know? Can't wait for her to hopefully work with Natty. I don't know oh, if she's cool. I don't know if she's like main roster though. I think it was a one off. She's still NXT. She got the NXT in card. That was she not did. a great picture. Oh, that's Becky Lynch. She, she got a lazy eye in that picture. That picture's not great for that. One of her eyes drips. Um, Becky Lynch had a promo, which I thought was really cool. I liked that she was um, twisted it around and being like, they're not forgotten about me. They're just trying to protect me. They don't think I can win. I was yeah. like, that's a clever twist on that. I like that. Um, hey, the dad match from WrestleMania. Yeah, Randy Orton versus AJ Styles. That was actually really good. It was a good match. Yeah, it was a great match. It's a good match at WrestleMania. Um, yeah, it should have been a, like a WrestleMania kind of match. It was a good match yeah, at sure, WrestleMania. That's true. <laughs> that's why. <laughs> yeah. We've seen this. It was a good um, feud at WrestleMania. <laughs> and then OC and Viking Raiders came out and tussled around a little bit too. Yeah, so we're going to um, see Orton and Raiders. Orton Raiders versus the, the club. No, that could be cool. Yeah, yeah the could be okay with that. I can be alright with that. I don't got no problems with that. Um, that leads us into NXT this week and AEW this week. Um, like I said, so we got two matches we know for NXT. One is opening the show, Balor versus Adam Cole uh, for the title with no uh, commercials. And then they got Rhea Ripley versus uh, Shayna for the women's title. How incredible would it be if they switched both titles? That'd fuck up everybody. That'd fuck up everybody. Don't do it. Don't do it. <laughs> Be bitch, do it, do it, do it. Um, and then AEW announced that they're gonna have a an opening match without commercials. Uh, I'm trying to remember what it was, but I was like, okay. Um, it's like Pac and Hangman Page again. Oh uh, not, damn it! I'm not. just kidding. <laughs> Chapter thirty <laughs> in our unending series. Um, the important question is, will the audio work? <laughs> I have to cut the sounds of people rolling. Opener will also be commercial free, right here. Yeah, but that's a video. I'm not trying to watch a fucking video. Oh, I guess I got words. Um, <laughs> AEW announced we're revealing the Wednesday time to open with Kenny Omega and Paige versus Lucha Brothers. Oh. As an advertised dream match. No, not a dream match, but they are kind of building the um, tension between Heyman and Paige and Omega. So that's definitely going to happen. I've had some weird dreams. I mean, I could see that being what? a dream match. I've had some. Uh, they're weirder. calling everything a fucking dream match, and you yeah. guys aren't established. I don't think they know what dream match means. Yeah, I, I once had a dream. Where, I yeah. once had a dream where I woke up and I had no arms, and I drove to school, and I will remember. There's that also I had no going arms. to be Chris Jericho versus the Jungle Boy in a non-title <laughs> ten-minute limit match. A nine, a non-title ten-minute. Yeah, time limit match. Interesting. Oh, an um, exposition. I guess. <laughs> and then Young Bucks versus SCU. Uh, with the titles on the line, uh, Britt Baker versus Chris Statlander to crown a number one contender. Chris Statlander should win that. Please. Yeah. Well, she's an alien, so who gives a shit? She's an alien. Um, and then you got Darby Allen and Cody Rhodes versus Butcher Baker and Candlestick Maker, plus Awesome Kong in action. Oh, Awesome Kong's gonna be in action. Some yeah. Squash match. Yeah. I'm, it's gonna be some job. Yeah. Gonna be just squash. in action. Yeah. I hope she squashes uh, Brandy. Not gonna happen. I think that'd be really good. Um, so, I mean, there's some pretty cool shit going to go on tomorrow. Yep. Um, yeah, I'd say check it out. Check, watch everything you can. Check it uh, out. Eat it up. Um, the only way for things to grow is for us to watch it and talk about it. Yeah. Um, I'm just trying to think if there's anything else happening in the world of wrestling that we missed. Oh, uh, Kofi signed a new deal. Five year. Yeah. Another five-year deal, Kofi. Mm -hmm. Cool. Which I think is good for him. No, I, I mean, it's, know, it's, I it's the best move for him, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, Today was NWA. Came back. NWA came back. You had a couple promos from Marty Scroll. 
-hmm. Pretty fucking cool. And it was like you said, or like I said uh, during the thing, I don't think we're supposed to see this. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Uh, they're also doing the preliminaries for the television tournaments, television title tournaments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Nikola Koloff, Nikita Koloff, mm -hmm. came out and presented the title mm -hmm. as a thing. Um, they got Ricky Starks versus, um, what's the murderer? Eddie Kingston. Yeah. Uh, versus, or, and then they got a, another match being um, Question Mark and, fuck, I don't remember the other guy. Because it was Question Mark. I was like, what does it matter? Yeah. He's so good. Um, Shit, I forgot. Yeah. Did you get to watch the full NWA today? Most of it. There was a, kind of a twist ending. Was there? I didn't get to watch it, so I'm gonna watch it tonight. Uh, we would have done a watch along if I coulda. You would have. Um, you're gonna get swerved. Yep. Um. But that's it. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. That pretty much wraps watch. it up for us um, right now. Yeah, but that's pretty much it. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead uh, and give you guys these. And the American Girl for Clump. Oh, oh wow. He gets a freaking... <laughs> Clump gets another belt. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you texting? <laughs> you just got a gift, dude. <laughs> what? This is a little holiday special, a little holiday cheer. Are you the people that wrap things in bags? No. This is wrapped. That is wrapped. That's a regular wrap. It was in a bag. Yeah. So the, we're supposed to open it right now? Oh, yeah. Who, are you guys going to wait? Are you going to wait for him to open first? Yeah, I'll go first. Yeah. I do the, uh, oh shit. I got swerved right here. I thought I'd be able to open it up just from you that. You can't. She tapes things pretty crazy. Damn. That's some good wrapping. Oh my god. That's some good wrapping. Ooh, sweet. Whoa. Too sweet, brother. Yeah. That is cool. Oh, this yeah. is a dope one, dude. Thank you. Yeah, it's not bad. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, it's dude. Not bad at all. Autograph. Heck yeah, dude. Little, I mean, they're going into Hall of Fame. Yep. yep. Those are some Hall of Famers right That's there. Appropriate. Is this going to be a replica of Batista's cock? Because I know that it's not big enough. That's not big enough for <laughs> it's that. It's folded in half. <laughs> <laughs> it's flaccid. It doesn't have a weight to it. Okay. Be gentle. Oh shit. Is that signed? Yeah, get your hand off that. Get your Jesus. hand off that! Oh, God. I said be gentle. Yeah. Oh, speaking oh of. Oh my God. Jesus Christ. Dude. Topical. That is amazing. Topical. <laughs> where, where? How? Don't worry about Check it. Check it out. Check it out. Show it up on the camera. That is a Marty oh, Scroll villain mask. Signed, the villain, Marty Scroll. And I framed it in this little God. thing here. <laughs> Quit doing this shit! <laughs> Yeah, hold it up, huh? I know. Turn it yeah, to <laughs> Fuck. That's amazing. Like, I even made the thing so you can hang it. Dude. Like, it's already ready for you to hang. Oh, my God. That's yeah, that took a minute. Amazing. That was yeah. a long project. <laughs> that, was, that was a DIY <laughs> thing. Fuck, that's amazing. Yeah, it didn't come in a frame. Thanks, man. Hell, yeah. I appreciate it, dude. Happy Christmas, uh, happy, happy Hanukkah, holidays. happy all of the, the days. Yeah, they had Hanukkah wrapping paper. Yeah, there's Hanukkah paper oh, inside of there. They have one end cap in Target that has like a Hanukkah thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's got the mench on a bench. Mench oh, on a bench I, is my I, I favorite. Remember, wasn't the mench on the bench like a shark tank idea? I think so. And I it's really it, good. I think it was. <laughs> and it works. It was and it made works. money, so it also fits. Yep. It does. I think that'll do it for us, guys. Uh, check us out. Follow us at Ref Marsh on Twitter, W-O-T-R, the show. Uh, you'll see a little shout-out from one of our heroes, the legendary Little Nature. Um, have a good one, guys. Enjoy the holidays. We'll see you guys just right before the New Year's. Last Cheers. call.